Introducing Gemstone Orthodontics, where brilliance meets compassion in crafting your perfect smile. With a board-certified orthodontist, Dr. Patel, your smile is in expert hands. Our commitment to the latest advancements in technology bring precision and comfort to your orthodontic experience. Whether you are considering braces or liners for yourself or for your child, call today at 908-852-9899 or visit us at www.gemstoneortho.com to schedule a complimentary consultation. Choosing a college is a big, big, big deal. But I know I started right because CCM is in the top 2% of community colleges in the nation. And at County College of Morris, I get to choose over 100 programs. Whether you're just out of high school, like me, exploring career options, like me, or seeking lifelong learning, like me, make CCM your choice, like me. Go big and visit ccm.edu and aspire to be you. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed. So give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family-owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. The County College of Morris Foundation Annual Golf Classic is coming to Brook Lake Country Club in Flora Park on Monday, October 16th. Golfers will enjoy 18 holes of golf on one of New Jersey's premier courses between a barbecue lunch spread and a buffet dinner. Registration begins at 11 a.m., giving golfers access to the locker room, driving range, and lunch in the clubhouse before our 12.30 shotgun start. At 5 p.m., enjoy an open bar cocktail reception prior to our 6 p.m. dinner and awards program. Proceeds benefit CCM student athletes. Register online at ccm.edu slash foundation slash golf. At Paint Perrine, we don't just sell paint and paint accessories. We eat, sleep, and breathe it. Not actually, though. That would be weird. With our huge selection of incredible Benjamin Moore paints, choosing the right color and finish can be a big decision. Luckily, with over 40 years of experience, we can answer any question you have. Whether you're a seasoned contractor or a DIYer, we have all the tools you need to get the job done right the first time. Ready for your next project? Visit us at Paint Parade or shop online at paintparade.com. Sussex Meatpacking in Wharton, New Jersey is a family-owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store-made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre-made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at sussexmeat.com. The Green Wave isn't just what we call ourselves. It represents all we are called to. We strive for excellence in mind, body, and spirit. We put in the work in programs that test us, guide us to the colleges we pursue. We live true to putting others before ourselves, to the lifelong connections we've made. This is the spirit and strength we are called to. Roll Wave. DNA Landscaping. We service all of your lawn care needs. We are a full-service lawn care and landscaping company providing traditional needs such as lawn maintenance, planting, trimming, mulch, tree removal, and stump grinding, as well as landscape design and snow removal. With over 10 years of experience serving Morris and Sussex counties, both residential and commercial properties, call DNA Landscaping at 973-223-5845. Montella Inc. is a family-owned dumpster rental business located in Stanhope, New Jersey that's been around since 1984. We provide prompt, quality service at a reasonable price for our New Jersey customers, whom we consider our family. We don't just take out the trash. Montella Inc. is a full-service waste management company servicing demolition sites, construction projects, factory sites, shopping centers, commercial businesses, and homeowners. Call today at 973-927-2232. 
Jen Basilino of the Kosher Real Estate Group, LLC, is a Morris County top real estate agent and New Jersey Circle of Excellence award winner year over year that takes the time and care to understand your real estate needs and concerns. She's extremely successful in representing clients in selling and purchasing a home, new construction, townhouses, million dollar homes, rentals, and even commercial properties. Call her today at 973-202-2103. Hmm. Attention homeowners, get ready to meet Brandy Brosian of Compass Real Estate. Brandy wants to sell your home with ease and maximize your return on investment, providing a personalized approach that includes deep cleaning, to staging, to professional digital exposure. Brandy's innovative approach provides so much added value that you and your home will feel the VIP difference. Don't wait another day. Reach out to Brandy Brosian today. The goal, we reset and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open eye. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, oh. in the end zone, it is caught. Charge, good for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score. And that is a base hit. The run will score. And Freshman, pull a check, gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! Uh -huh. From George W. Hodgins Stadium on the campus of Paramus High School, this production of Morris Sussex Sports Friday Night Lights is on the air as the Paramus Spartans host the Mawa Thunderbirds in a crossover matchup between the Super Football Conference's American Red Division, of which the Thunderbirds are a part, and the Super Football Conference's Patriot Blue Division, of which the Paramus Spartans are a part. My name is Reed Keller, and it is a picturesque Friday evening in northern New Jersey as we get set for a good one here tonight. It is senior night for the Paramus Spartans who are having a very, very solid season under head coach Joe Sabella as they look to make another playoff appearance in the North Jersey football conferences. Mawa comes in at four and two off a very difficult loss in their last game. They dropped a 17-14 decision to Ramsey on the sixth. And Ramsey now sits in front of them in the Super Football Conference's American Red Division. And Mawa was in that game right up until the final seconds as the senior kicker for Ramsey made an 18 yard field goal that pretty much even a freshman kicker could make but that downed the Thunderbirds and sets them up for a tough matchup with the Spartans who sit at five and two and are on a four game winning streak. They've won 35 to seven over Demarest, shut out Dumont 28 to nothing, beat Patterson Kennedy 37 to six, and then blank Bergenfield 42 to nothing. And they sit in the upper crust of the Patriot Blue Division, which is a bit of a mix of talented teams and teams that are having some playoff aspirations and then ones with a little bit to work on. Old Tapan leads the way at 6-0, 4-0 in the division. Pascac Valley is 4-2, 2-1 in the division. They have already beaten Paramus, who sits at 5-2, 2-2 in the Patriot Blue. And then Bergenfield and Riverdale are both 1-5 and 1-2, and, and, and Demarest is 1-6 and 0 oh and 3 for the Thunderbirds of Mawa. They sit in third in the American Red as they look to close out on a playoff spot. Westwood leads that division at 6 and 0, oh, 3 and 0 oh in the division. Ramsey is 3 and 4, 2 and 1. Mawa is 4 and 2 and 2 and 2. Ridgefield Park 2 and 4, 1 and 2. Dumont 3 and 3 and 0 oh and 1 and Tenafly bringing up the rear at 2 and 3 and 0 oh and 2. This should be a high scoring matchup as well. Both teams 
well over 100 points scored this season. Mawa's racked up 155 in their four wins. Paramus has 186 points scored in their five victories and have only allowed 89 points on the season. And most of those came in their two losses early on where they dropped a 35 to 13 decision to Old Tapan and a 41 to 21 decision to Pascag Valley. As we get set up for the senior night ceremonies, the Paramus Band is making their way into the stadium now to get set up beneath the overarching balloon arch that the seniors will walk through. We want to thank some of our sponsors for tonight's broadcast. Biagio's and the Terrace are conveniently located in the heart of Paramus and are open seven days a week for lunch, dinner, and late night snacking. Whether it's a family dinner, a drink out at the bar, or even a private event for up to 600 guests, they aim to please. We also want to thank Modern Orthopedics of New Jersey. They are a proud sponsor of the Paramus football team. You can visit their website at modernorthonj.com to learn more about their expert orthopedic surgeons. You can also call them at 983-898-5999. Modern Orthopedics of New Jersey, a different orthopedic experience. Woodstone Pizza, they are family owned and operated a gorgeous restaurant bar since 2009. Specializing in Italian American cuisine with brick oven thin crust pizza, they offer outdoor dining and a private party room for up to 100 www.woodstonepizzabarandgrill.com or call them at 201-845-7600. If you're looking for an accountant, someone local, someone you can trust with your personal and business tax needs and overall financial needs, then you can look no further than Joseph F. Mancuso, a certified public accountant located on Hackensack Avenue in Hackensack, New Jersey, 201-880-1100. Murray Contracting, no matter the job, large or small, they can guarantee your satisfaction. Reach out to Murray Contracting today, also located in Hackensack. You can call them at 201-670-0030. Michael & Sons Auto Sales, with years of experience serving the New Jersey area, their dealership is dedicated to offering high-quality pre-owned vehicles to their customers right on Route 37 in Tom's River. For all of your swimming pool needs, such as openings and closings, parts, all repairs, including underwater repairs, weekly, bi-weekly maintenance, and service, call Bear at Rochelle Pools, 201-384-7999. Rochelle Pools does everything except build them, so give Bear a call. And then located on Route 17 in East Rutherford, Stone Plus Design has over 30 years of combined experience in the stone industry from their custom stone countertop fabrications and cabinet and tile design services to full home and commercial renovations. Stone Plus ensures exceptional results and customer service, most importantly, on time. Whether you're renovating or building an entirely new home, Stone Plus Design is a one-stop shop for all of your kitchen, bath, and other stone needs. You can call them today at 201 438 2725 or find them on Facebook, Instagram, or their website at www.stoneplusdesign.com. And finally, the Orange Lantern, celebrating 90 years of friendly service, exceptional food and beverages, and entertainment. And you can catch your favorite sporting events on one of their many, many big screen TVs, including all of the action on the Morris Sussex Sports Network tonight. The matchup between the Mawa Thunderbirds of the Paramus Spartans and some other big North Jersey football action as well, including the matchup between the undefeated Caldwell Chiefs and the Cedar Grove Panthers. We are just about five minutes away from getting the senior night ceremonies underway. You could still see uh, maybe off to the right of your screen as they were loading in on the right side of the stadium, the Paramus band setting up for their halftime performance. Paramus will be clad in their home blue uniforms with the white helmets and the navy stripe across the top in a almost pseudo Penn State style taking on the Mawa Thunderbirds. You can see a little bit on your screen, including on the sideline, all white uniforms with the chromium blue helmets. And it will be a perfect night for offense in this ball game. Not much of a breeze to speak of throughout the stadium and just a crisp, cool Friday evening as we start to get towards the Friday night lights playoff portion 
of this high school sports season. We're going to step aside for a quick commercial break, and when we come back, the senior night ceremonies for the Paramus Spartans honoring four years of dedication to this great team under Coach Joe Sabella, who will be very proud to see his seniors get their moment in the sun before the game. So we'll step aside, keep it right here on the Morris Sussex Sports Network. Paramus and Mawa straight ahead on a Friday night from Paramus. Angelina's Trotteria, located at 184 Columbia Turnpike, Florham Park, New Jersey. We are your neighborhood BYOB. Stop in and join us for lunch or dinner. Angelina's is proud to offer visitors the following specials. Tuesdays are two for two large pizzas for only $22. On Wednesdays, kids under 10 eat free. Thursday night is pasta night. All pastas on the menu are 20% off. Family serving friends can stop into Angelina's and let our family serve yours. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. Shop and service at your most trusted local Ford dealership, serving Morris, Sussex, and all of New Jersey. Come experience why so many people buy and service from us over and over again. Our sales and service department make you feel at home, and there's never any pressure. Maplecrest Ford of Mendham is here for all your vehicle needs. For sales and service, call 888-797-7003 or go to maplecrestford.com. I'm a little busy. Uh, she wants it now. Explain to me how I'm going to do that. We got fast lane, Brian. The fast what? Fast lane. Bring her in. This is us? Paul Miller fast lane? Who else would do it? Buy a car? Trade a car? Finance a car? Have it delivered completely online. This is so easy. She could have done it herself. She said you're the car guy, Brian. Isn't that the truth? Get the fast lane, winner. It's the only way to fly. That's fast lane. Powered by Paul Miller. That is the Paul Miller difference. WIS gives me the freedom to be entrepreneurial, innovative. I feel supported to bring 100% of myself and my personality to work each and every day. I'm the CEO of WIS Family Office. I have two amazing children. I'm the daughter of French and Italian immigrants. Above all, I'm someone who derives strength and confidence from my ability to connect with others, and I strive to make a difference in their lives. Sport Acura of Denville, we know you have a lot of choices when it comes to buying your new Acura. So why shop with dealers that don't value your time or play games with you? Why not choose a dealership that always values their clients' time and has set a benchmark in customer service for nearly 40 years? Make it easy. Choose Autosport Acura of Denville. For sales, service, and a relationship you can rely on, make it easy and choose Autosport Acura of Denville. Blue Nail was superior in almost every aspect. We worked with contractors for almost everything in the firehouse, and Blue Nail really made us feel comfortable all the way through, from the contract to pre-planning to scheduling, getting the job done. We are thrilled that they were able to do the job for us. Take a deep breath. Oh, nice, huh? That's some clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature. That is good. Who installed the system? ICS. They're the leaders in HVAC. They make the duct work at their own factory, so we even save some money. That's impressive. You recommend them? <laughs> it's ICS for HVAC. I see why. Ah. Hey, Lorraine, go get a big plastic bag. Take some air home with you. Stuber Insurance Agency, we work diligently to make sure you get the right insurance for you, your family, and your employees.
Within our carefully selected group of financially sound insurance companies, our goal is to find you the best coverage at the most competitive prices. Visit us online to request a quote or make an appointment at 115 Mill Street in Hackettstown. I actually used to be deathly afraid of public speaking. I intentionally became an adjunct professor teaching tax, and I also became a Zumba instructor as a way of overcoming this fear of mine. They're both forms of leading and teaching in their own right. Bottom line though, WIS supports my passions. I truly believe that WIS wants me to be the best version of myself, and it's such an amazing feeling that I truly have the freedom to do that here. Step-by-step -step painting and general contracting, your trusted partner for all your home needs. For over two decades, we've brought our clients' visions to life throughout northern New Jersey. Our team of professionals and commitment to excellence deliver outstanding results. From painting, bathroom and kitchen renovations, additions, remodeling, and custom faux work, we've got you covered. Our team tackles projects of all sizes and complexities. Step-by-step -step painting, building dreams, one project at a time. Cortez Disposal is a leader in the solid waste industry. We offer dumpster roll-off containers for residential, commercial, and industrial needs all over New Jersey. We are women-owned and family-operated. Cortez Disposal, where, where your, your garbage, garbage is, is our life. life. Calling all parents of young athletes. Did you know that Safe Medication Disposal not only protects your young athletes, but also the environment they play in? Be a proactive guardian. Safeguard your home by disposing of medications properly through drop-off sites in New Jersey, located at most police departments and designated pharmacies. By doing so, you help prevent pollution of our precious environment, ensuring clean waterways and healthier surroundings for your young champions. Make a positive impact on their lives and the planet. Safely dispose of unused and unwanted medications today. For all of the perks that come with working here, I would say that the most valuable thing WIS offers is freedom. The freedom to make the most of your role, to really go beyond the job description, the freedom to think differently and be rewarded for it, and the freedom to show up as 100% who you are. This game is brought to you by Aaron Mizzarelli of State Farm in Randolph. My licensed and experienced team members are here to serve you for all of your insurance and financial service needs in New Jersey and New York. We offer excellent customer service and our office is conveniently located in Randolph, New Jersey. For a free auto, home, life, or business quote, visit us at AaronMizzarelli.com or call us at 973-389-9999. If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage, Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks. So fast, it's worth the wait. Do your glory days as a high school athlete feel far behind you? Are memories of being out there competing so clear that you can feel it? But then reality sets in and your stiff back, achy knees, and painful shoulders remind you that it's been years or even decades since you can move that way. Don't worry, the team 
at Better with Physical Therapy's one-on-one customized care can help you feel and move better again. Their specialists will find the cause of what's slowing you down and build a plan that will help you realize that your glory days are still ahead of you. You can get better with Better with Physical Therapy located in the Madison YMCA. Request an appointment today at betterwithpt.com. I enjoy helping nonprofits achieve their goals and really accomplish their mission, namely by nurturing my relationship with them, their staff, their donors, their volunteers, and their board members. I think the key to being trusted is really transparency. What I've seen time and time again is that when you give anything the right conditions, the support, the autonomy, trust, your full attention, it will thrive. This is as true for my clients and for my colleagues as it is for myself here at Bliss. is so cold my fish froze mine's so hot my sneakers melted rooms with different temperatures that means your hvac system is outdated and wasting energy at ics we'll install an energy efficient system that provides a constant flow of clean fresh air at the perfect temperature in every room you could save money each month and the price we quote is the price you'll pay get a quote today see why we say ics for hvac i see why at Pasquarella Brothers, we love creating great food for our customers. Everything is made daily using real fresh ingredients, and you can taste the difference. We specialize in creating gluten-free options for our customers, all prepared in a separate area so there's no cross-contamination. We also pride ourselves on providing unparalleled catering for events big and small. We love what we do. Stop into Pasquarella Brothers, you'll taste the difference. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Sean from Sean Malloy Fitness. Here's a little video to show you what we do here. James Ultimo, your trusted licensed real estate professional at Exit Realty Connections in Hackettstown, New Jersey. With over 36 years of customer service excellence, James is the smart choice whether you're buying or selling. Your dream property journey starts with James Ultimo. Contact me today to turn your real estate dreams into reality. James Ultimo, 973-214-6448. Contact Mary Camito for an auto quote today. We specialize in roofing and siding. That includes gutters, windows, doors, stone siding, decks, and painting. We also utilize new age technology like drones and 3D modeling. The drones keep our guys safe on the ground with an aerial perspective, and the 3D modeling gives us exact measurements for a precise job scope. Give us a call today. We'll be happy to provide you with a complimentary drone inspection. We look forward to keeping your home and your family safe. Maximum Health Physical Therapy is an individually owned practice with offices in Bud Lake and Long Valley, New Jersey. Our licensed therapists use hands-on manual therapy and are actively involved in our patients' progress. We use a collaborative team approach which benefits our patients and we accept most insurance plans, including Medicare. We offer ARPWAVE Neurotherapy, which accelerates healing 10 times faster, drastically decreases chronic pain, is FDA approved, and is covered by most insurance companies. Please visit us at Max MaximumHealthPT.com and regain the life you love.
Majestic Flowers and Gifts, your trusted family-owned and operated florist since 2006. Our loyal customers are always satisfied with our attention to detail and customer service. We serve all of Morris County and offer deliveries for any flower needs. Providing our customers with a variety of flowers, from prom flowers to anniversary arrangements, wedding centerpieces, get well soon flowers, funeral flowers, and much more. Next time you're thinking of getting flowers for your loved ones and special occasions, rely on Majestic Flowers and Gifts to provide nothing but the highest quality. Back here at George W. Hodgins Stadium, the Knights festivities are about to get underway as the Mawa Marching Thunderbirds will kick us off with a performance on the field ahead of Paramus Spartans Senior Night for their football game against the visiting Mawa Thunderbirds. So we'll send it over to the public address system now for that performance. From Captain and Harini
Let's hear it one more time for the Mawa High School Marching Thunderbirds and their terrific show, Olympus. Thank you, Thunderbirds. Again, we're here at George W. Hodgins Stadium for this matchup between the Mawa Thunderbirds and the Paramus Spartans. The Paramus Spartans hosting their senior night tonight and are getting set to take the field to honor their seniors as they host the Thunderbirds on a gorgeous Friday evening here in Paramus. You see some of the band being cleaned up after Mawa just went through their pregame performance. And now it's time for the Spartans to take the field and honor their senior class. Smaller senior class, but still plenty of contributions up and down the roster. We'll obviously detail that a little bit during the ball game as we will send it back over to the public address system for the presentation of the senior honors as they begin to be escorted onto the field by their families. Good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Paramus High School campus in George Hodgins Field on this sparkling football Friday. As your Spartans host the visiting Thunderbirds of Mawa in an SFC interdivisional contest. The Thunderbirds come in at 4-2 while your Spartans enter the next contest with a 5-2 record and a four-game winning streak. Mawa is coached by Adam Zuch in his second season, assisted by David Bernhardt, Justin Grippo, Justin Jackpot, Sean Noonan, and Justin Taylor. The Spartans are led by seventh year head coach Joe Sabella and assistant coaches Joe Tran, Ted Evans, Jerry Soma, Pat Delaney, James Down, Matt Marini, and Kevin White. It's also senior night here at Paramus, and we now ask that all spectators direct their attention to the end zone to your right as we introduce your Spartan seniors and recognize them individually for their talents, leadership, resilience, and dedication. We will lead off with the band. And the first senior from the band we'd like to introduce is Estelle Bagmar, escorted by mom, Faiza, and brother, Ali.
next band member to step forward is Sayaka Kawashima. Let's go to my parents, Mina and Yosafumi and brother Shuya.
senior left guard and defensive end number 70, Ryan Zay. Ryan heads to seventh. Field tonight is created by mother Elena and father Peter Moose and sister Amanda Capaccioni. Number 70, Ryan Zay. And so that concludes the senior night presentations for the Paramus Spartans, honoring both the football team, the cheerleading squad, and the band as well as we get set for a matchup, a crossover matchup between the Mawa Thunderbirds and the Paramus Spartans. As you can see, Mawa comes in with a record of four and two off a difficult loss to Ramsey. Paramus is getting hot at the right time. They are five and two and riding a four game winning streak. And it should be a good one on the other side of this break of the Morris Sussex Sports Network as we get closer to kickoff on Friday Night Lights. Introducing Gemstone Orthodontics, where brilliance meets compassion in crafting your perfect smile. With a board-certified orthodontist, Dr. Patel, your smile is in expert hands. Our commitment to the latest advancements in technology bring precision and comfort to your orthodontic experience. Whether you are considering braces or liners for yourself or for your child, call today at 908-852-9899 or visit us at www.gemstoneortho.com to schedule a complimentary consultation. Choosing a college is a big, big, big deal. But I know I started right because CCM is in the top 2% of community colleges in the nation. And at County College of Morris, I get to choose over 100 programs. Whether you're just out of high school, like me, exploring career options, like me, or seeking lifelong learning, like me, make CCM your choice, like me. Go big and visit ccm.edu and aspire to be you. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. The County College of Morris Foundation Annual Golf Classic is coming to Brook Lake Country Club in Flora Park on Monday, October 16th. Golfers will enjoy 18 holes of golf on one of New Jersey's premier courses between a barbecue lunch spread and a buffet dinner. Registration begins at 11 a.m., giving golfers access to the locker room, driving range, and lunch in the clubhouse before our 12.30 shotgun start. 
At 5 p.m., enjoy an open bar cocktail reception prior to our 6 p.m. dinner and awards program. Proceeds benefit CCM student athletes. Register online at ccm.edu slash foundation slash golf. At Paint Perine, we don't just sell paint and paint accessories. We eat, sleep, and breathe it. Not actually, though. That would be weird. With our huge selection of incredible Benjamin Moore paints, choosing the right color and finish can be a big decision. Luckily, with over 40 years of experience, we can answer any question you have. Whether you're a seasoned contractor or a DIYer, we have all the tools you need to get the job done right the first time. Ready for your next project? Visit us at Paint Parade or shop online at paintparade.com. Sussex Meatpacking in Wharton, New Jersey is a family owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store-made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre-made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at sussexmeat.com. The Green Wave isn't just what we call ourselves. It represents all we are called to. We strive for excellence in mind, body, and spirit. We put in the work in programs that test us, guide us to the colleges we pursue. We live true, putting others before ourselves, to the lifelong connections we've made. This is the spirit and strength we are called to. Roll Wave. DNA Landscaping. We service all of your lawn care needs. We are a full-service lawn care and landscaping company providing traditional needs such as lawn maintenance, planting, trimming, mulch, tree removal, and stump grinding, as well as landscape design and snow removal. With over 10 years of experience serving Morris and Sussex counties for both residential and commercial properties, call DNA Landscaping at 973-223-5845. Montella Inc. is a family-owned dumpster rental business located in Stanhope, New Jersey that's been around since 1984. We provide prompt, quality service at a reasonable price for our New Jersey customers, whom we consider our family. We don't just take out the trash. Montella Inc. is a full-service waste management company servicing demolition sites, construction projects, factory sites, shopping centers, commercial businesses, and homeowners. Call today at 973-927-2232. Jen Basilino of the Kosher Real Estate Group, LLC, is a Morris County top real estate agent and New Jersey Circle of Excellence award winner year over year that takes the time and care to understand your real estate needs and concerns. She's extremely successful in representing clients in selling and purchasing a home, new construction, townhouses, million dollar homes, rentals, and even commercial properties. Call her today at 973-202-2103. Hmm. Attention homeowners, get ready to meet Brandy Brosian of Compass Real Estate. Brandy wants to sell your home with ease and maximize your return on investment, providing a personalized approach that includes deep cleaning, to staging, to professional digital exposure. Brandy's innovative approach provides so much added value that you and your home will feel the VIP difference. Don't wait another day. Reach out to Brandy Brosian today. Angelina's Trotteria, located at 184 Columbia Turnpike, Florham Park, New Jersey. We are your neighborhood BYOB. Stop in and join us for lunch or dinner. Angelina's is proud to offer visitors the following specials. Tuesdays are two for two large pizzas for only $22. On Wednesdays, kids under 10 eat free. Thursday night is pasta night. All pastas on the menu are 20% off. Family serving friends can stop into Angelina's and let our family serve yours. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. 
I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. Shop and service at your most trusted local Ford dealership, serving Morris, Sussex, and all of New Jersey. Come experience why so many people buy and service from us over and over again. Our sales and service department make you feel at home, and there's never any pressure. Maplecrest Ford of Mendham is here for all your vehicle needs. For sales and service, call 888-797-7003 or go to maplecrestford.com. I'm a little busy. Uh, she wants it now. Explain to me how I'm going to do that. We got fast lane, Brian. The fast what? Fast lane. Bring her in. This is us? Paul Miller fast lane? Who else would do it? Buy a car? Trade a car? Finance a car? Have it delivered completely online? This is so easy. She could have done it herself. She said you're the car guy, Brian. Isn't that the truth? Get the fast lane, winner. It's the only way to fly. That's fast lane. Powered by Paul Miller. That is the Paul Miller difference. WIS gives me the freedom to be entrepreneurial, innovative. I feel supported to bring 100% of myself and my personality to work each and every day. I'm the CEO of WIS Family Office. I have two amazing children. I'm the daughter of French and Italian immigrants. Above all, I'm someone who derives strength and confidence from my ability to connect with others, and I strive to make a difference in their lives. Sport Acura of Denville, we know you have a lot of choices when it comes to buying your new Acura. So why shop with dealers that don't value your time or play games with you? Why not choose a dealership that always values their clients' time and has set a benchmark in customer service for nearly 40 years? Make it easy. Choose Autosport Acura of Denville. For sales, service, and a relationship you can rely on, make it easy and choose Autosport Acura of Denville. Blue Nail was superior in almost every aspect. We worked with contractors for almost everything in the firehouse, and Blue Nail really made us feel comfortable all the way through, from the contract to pre-planning to scheduling, getting the job done. We are thrilled that they were able to do the job for us. Back here at George Hodgins Stadium, if you're just joining us, you haven't missed a second of the action, but you've missed a lot of the senior night ceremonies as the Paramus Spartans host the Mawa Thunderbirds. Once again, my name is Reed Keller, and Morris Sussex production of Friday Night Football is on the air as these two teams match up in a interdivisional matchup, pitting the Thunderbirds out of the American Red Division in the Super Football Conference against the Spartans out of the Patriot Blue Division. Both teams are in third in their respective divisions. Mawa at four and two, two and two in the division, including losses to Westwood and a stunner against the Ramsey Rams. The Spartans are five and two and also two and two in their division. They lost to Old Tapan and Pascac Valley, who are ahead of them one and two in the Patriot Blue Division, but have also topped Demarest and Bergenfield as the captains meet at midfield for the coin toss tonight. Mawa clad in the white uniforms with the chromium topped helmets and the blue numbers. The Spartans on the near sideline clad in all navy with the white numbers as they get set to toss the coin in the air and find out who gets the ball first. We'll set the scene a little bit more. A perfect, perfect night for football. Not a trace of wind on the field. So both of these high-powered offenses should have plenty of success in this one as we get towards playoff football in the state of New Jersey. Coins in the air. It's on the ground. And it appears as though Mawa will have the choice of what they want to do. So Mawa is setting up. They have won the toss and will receive. And that means that Paramus will put its offense on the field in the second half. And we'll see their defense first. A mostly defense led by senior leadership, as we saw in the pregame ceremony. Before we get to kickoff, we want to do one more thank you to our sponsors, including Biagio's and the Terrace, conveniently located in the heart of Paramus and open seven days a week for lunch, dinner, and late night, whether it's a family dinner, 
drink at the bar or a private event for up to 600 guests they aim to please. Modern Orthopedics, the proud sponsor of the Paramus football team. You can visit them at modernorthonj.com to learn more about their ex expert orthopedic surgeons. Woodstone Pizza, they offer delicious thin crust pizza in a brick oven as well as Italian-American cuisine. You can call them at 201-845-7600 or visit woodstonepizzabarngrill.com. If you're looking for a trusted certified public accountant, you should call Joseph F. Mancuso with the number on your screen. He can help you with your personal business and overall financial tax needs. Murray Contracting, no matter the job, large or small, they guarantee your satisfaction. Michael and Sons Auto Sales, has served the New Jersey area for years, and they offer high-quality pre-owned vehicles to their customers. For all your swimming pool needs, even though we're almost into fall, you should call Baird Rochelle Pools, and then also get some nice stonework put around it done by Stone Plus Design. For over 30 years, they have combined experience in the stone industry from countertops to cabinets and everything that you might need. And then also the Orange Lantern, exceptional food, 90 years of friendly service, and plenty of big screen TVs. We hope you have this one queued up on your big screen as we get set for kickoff. The Spartans set to tee it up at the 40-yard line, and we are underway as Brandon Durenberger sends it down to the 10-yard line. Fielded by Mawa out to the 15, slipping through a couple of tackles, but ultimately making a very small return for the Thunderbirds. As that will be a first down and 10 for Mawa as we get this one underway. Mawa has a pretty talented offense that can put up points in a hurry. They won 19 to 16 in their first game over Kinelon, then put up 53 and 42 points respectively over the next two weeks over Tenafly and Ridgefield Park. They were blanked by Westwood, then beat Bergenfield 27 to six before being only held to two touchdowns by the Ramsey Rams. So now out of a shotgun set, they'll work from right to left. The snap and the rolling pocket to the near side, immediately under pressure. Now escaping to the outside is David Kabobel, and he will pick up the first down across the 30-yard line. The senior, David Kabobel, comes in with 226 yards through the air and 92 yards on the ground, and he just picked up a big first down there for the Thunderbirds, who will immediately get going offensively. They'll set up in a shotgun pistol set and they get an immediate false start and jump from the defensive line as they will pick up five more yards by penalty on the neutral zone infraction this is what Mawa likes to do they want to put pressure immediately on defenses so they'll come out and hit you for a big play then go no huddle and will work quickly with a hard count Kobobel again Flaps the hands together, does not take the snap, looks to the far sideline. Two wide receivers to the near side, one in the slot, one in between the hashes and the numbers. Snap, it'll be a trap handoff right up the middle, and that goes absolutely nowhere. The defensive line of Paramus swarming through there, including the senior Daniel Eliash. He was the first one through to make the hit on the big body running back of Preston Duffy. Duffy comes in with 59 totes, 382 yards on the year and three touchdowns. He can break one as well. But Eliash was there to break through the line of Mawa and make the stop. They'll go trips formation to the top of the screen now. Gobobo handoff again to Duffy and he is stuffed for a small gain. That'll make it a third down and seven yards to go with 1040 remaining in the first quarter. Gobobo's headed over to the far sideline looking for the answer to this first third down conversion that the Thunderbirds will have to get through on the night. Picked up the first down on a Kobobo run and then two running plays up the middle went absolutely nowhere. Now set up two wide receivers to the top of the screen and one in single coverage aligned with the numbers to the bottom of your screen or smart, design, smart device. Kabobo will take the snap, hand off Duffy, rolling up the middle, and he will be spilled at the 40-yard line. That's going to make it a fourth down and short, and what's Mawa's decision going to be? They got it up into that gray area. 
And it looks like Kabobel is coming off. And they are sending on what looks to be the punt unit. Or just a different quarterback. It is just a different quarterback as Joseph DeMarco is going to stand in, take this direct snap, roll up the middle, and he will plow forward for the first down. Senior Joseph DeMarco came in with 43 carries for 215 yards and six touchdowns. A little bit of a weapon X for them. He's also a receiver who's got eight catches for a buck 53. And they will keep possession as Gabobo will come back to take this shotgun snap. Two wide receivers at the bottom of the formation and two to the top. Gabobo straight drop back to pass. Pressured up the middle, he pops it across the middle and it's caught at the 50, spinning out of a tackle and then matriculating to the 45 yard line is Ryan Arsala, the junior. And he will move the chains once again. That'll move possession into the territory of the Spartans for the first time tonight. Defense came up with two big stops on the run game but have not had any answers on the last two plays. First down and 10, ball sitting inside the 45. They'll put it down at the 44. Another direct snap once again, rolling off the right side to Marco, and he gets across the line of scrimmage, maybe picks up a yard. That'll make it a second down and long for the glinting chrome helmet Thunderbirds. Kabobo will come back in, and he will take this second down snap. Staring on the far sideline, two wide receivers either side of the formation. Kabobo takes a little bit of a high snap, throws the bubble screen, it's caught, rolling up the far sideline, breaking out of a tackle, and headed down the sideline is DeMarco. He's going to roll into the end zone. Touchdown, Mawa. Although there are whistles in the backfield, and this is going to come back as a hold. So on the screen to the far side, I would assume, is where that hold came because DeMarco was wide open, and he just had an opportunity to roll up the far sideline. See it here on the screen, see if you can catch it on the far side. It was right there on that lead block you saw at the 40-yard line, and that's why DeMarco was able to race up the field. So it goes on the outside wide receiver of DeMarco, and that takes seven, six points rather off the board for the Thunderbirds. That'll make it a second down and 17 ball back at their own side of the 50-yard line. Literally, the ball sitting on their side of the midfield stripe, but they'll set it at the 50. Kabobo will work out of a shotgun set. Two wide receivers either side of the formation joined in the backfield by a single running back. Takes the snap, drops straight back, pressured up the middle, and the throw is a little bit high. He was going again for DeMarco. And so that'll make it a third down and 17 and a big opportunity for the Spartans going back and forth between getting some stops and forcing a third down, giving up a touchdown, and now they have a third and long or they can play the sticks inside their own 35-yard line. Try to get this Thunderbirds offense off the field that slowed down somewhat. As Kabobo will stand in a shotgun set. Looks over the defense, which is playing back. Takes a high snap. He'll put it in the belly of Duffy. Rolling off the near side, across the 45. Turning the corner up to the 40. And he will be brought down there. That's still going to make it a fourth down and long but he does get it back into plus territory. And now what's the call for Coach Adam Zuch? Kabobo is gonna stay on the field, as well as Alexander De Dios at a tight end position, and they are gonna go for this. Fourth down and seven at the 40 yard line willing to, if they don't convert, allow Paramus to start in their own. Can't, he's sacked, and there's a flag that comes out late. Is this gonna be a horse collar tackle up high on Kabobel? Officials are meeting 
at the 48-yard line, and it's actually a face mask, a defensive face mask call on that fourth down try. And so now what is Mawa going to do with yet another decision? Rough penalty to take right there as that is going to advance the ball all the way up for a first down penalty by yardage. So after forcing a fourth down and seven, Paramus is unable to get off the field. That's an impressive face mask call. I think that's the most impressive one that I've seen because Bobo to the ground was behind him. So he reached all the way around and yanked his face mask down. As it'll be a first and 10 once again for Mawa. High snap again. Kabobo gets it down, hands it off to Duffy. And Duffy is dropped after a minimal gain. It might be one. That'll be a second down and long for the Thunderbirds. They're going to make a switch at wide receiver. Thomas Lagenmeyer comes off. And they will bring Ryan out wide to the top of the screen. This is a, another high snap fielded by DeMarco. He runs off the right side and trundles his way across the 30-yard line. And we brought down there. He'll make it a third down and medium with six minutes to go. Long drive for the Thunderbirds. This has taken up half the quarter already. Third down and six. They've had a couple of conversions already. As they look to the far sideline for the single signals, Kabobel is back out there to take the snap at quarterback. Two wide receivers will come to the bottom of the screen. Two to the top as well in a reduced split formation. Kabobel takes the snap, drops straight back, protected well. Now he's going to roll out to the far side, sling it up the sideline, and it is too high and incomplete. Going for the corner post, and it didn't work out. That'll make it a fourth down and six. Mawa will stay out there once again. Can the Spartans come up with their much need? Bobo will work out of the shotgun. He's got two wide receivers to either side of the formation. Spartans playing coverage. Kabobo protected well, rolling to the near side. And that's going to move the chains for the first down. Joseph DeMarco has made a couple of... At the clock, shifting sides of the formation is Ryan Arsala. He will split to the top of the screen. And for the first time tonight, Kabobo is joined by two backs. As he takes the snap, hands it off to the one to his right. And that is DeMarco, and he plows his way across the 20. Make it a second down and short with 5.20 to go in the first. Kabobo will stay in at QB, take his signals from the far sideline. Two by two formation with DeMarco in the slot. Will they try the bubble screen attempt again as Kabobo almost gets another jump with his hard count? Checks for the signals. Now takes the snap, drops straight back, looking to the far side. He's going to take off and run to, the, to that way. Now he fires the little out route. It's caught, plowing towards the pylon, and in for the touchdown is Preston Duffy. Preston Duffy, the junior running back, just available in the flat, and he makes the catch for the touchdown, and this one will stand for the Thunderbirds. They had one pulled back by penalty. And a good job by Kabobel to extend the play. He looked to his first option. It wasn't there. And just getting lost in space was Duffy. Trailing away from him was Liam Jones, the junior. And now Mawa will send on its extra point unit to try to make this a 7-0 ball game with 4.44 to go. Jack Newman, the sophomore, is 3 for 4 on the year. And he just gets that one away and sails it straight through to make it 7-0 in favor of the Thunderbirds. 4.44 remaining in this opening quarter, and the Spartans are about to get the ball for the first time after their defense was just on the field for an extended period of time. 
That was a drive that started way back at the 15-yard line of the Thunderbirds and had a fair amount of back and forth action to it. They had a touchdown taken off by penalty, a couple of penalties to put them in at one point, a third and 17, and they were able to go through and convert it. Obviously, the big penalty on that drive was the face mask against Kabobel when the Spartans thought they had gotten off the field. So now the Mawa punt, or rather kickoff unit, will set up on the right side and send it back deep. Spartans preparing for a return, and that's going to make things pretty difficult for their offense as well. Obviously, a lot of offensive linemen play defensive line for schools of this size and for most high schools around the northern New Jersey area. So be pretty beaten down after that long drive. See if Mawa can take advantage as they will tee it up at the 40-yard line. Newman set to approach the ball. Gets his foot underneath it, and it's a sidewinding kick that will bounce its way at the 20, fielded at the 10, up to the 20, slipping across the 25, and brought down there was Ulan Carroll. And he will set the Spartans up with decent field position, first down and 10, and they're going to spot the ball outside the 25 at the 26, still with 444 remaining in the opening quarter. This Paramus offense has talent, and in their four-game winning streak, they have not been held under 20 points. Scored 35 in a win against Demarest, 28-0 over Dumont, 37-6 over Patterson Kennedy, and then a 42-0 shutout of Bergenfield last week. They're behind the eight ball a little bit here as they start first down and 10. Now there's a little bit of a delay as the officiating crew is standing over the ball. Now they'll back up. And it will be Cormac O'Hara, the junior, leading the show for the Spartans. 38 for 73 on the year, 407 yards. Sets up with a shotgun set, takes the snap, hand off to the near side, showing some speed. Racing around the corner is Adam Kaba. And Adrian Kaba is brought down. Thought I might have seen a penalty marker in the backfield. And that's going to back them up as the Spartans get called for a hold. Second holding penalty that we've seen in the ballgame now, one for each side. So after that smart and effective run by Adrian Kaba, the senior, that will move the ball back inside the 20-yard line to make it a first down and 20 with 4.29 remaining. Cormac O'Hara setting up for a second snap, arranging his troops. Now he's in the shotgun. Kaba is joining him to his right. Now tight end motion sets it up with two tight ends on the right. It'll be a jet sweep pitch play, trying to turn the corner, and coming up the near sideline is Mason Merkel, and he rumbles out to the 40-yard line. The Spartans pick up the penalty yardage and then some and move the chains out to the 40-yard line. A good jet motion by Mason Merkel, the junior, and he rumbles up the near side on his 23rd carry of the season. And O'Hara did well to field that with just one hand and get it into the belly of his wide receiver on the jet motion. And so it'll be a first down and 10, actually just shy of the 40-yard line. O'Hara takes the high snap, gets it down to Kaba across the 40, 45, 50, breaking across the 45, and he's brought down by two Thunderbirds. A strong run for Adrian Kaba as his first official carry of the ball game picks up another first down for Paramus. And they'll exchange some personnel and get set for another first down, this time in Thunderbird territory. Offense showing no ill effects of that long drive if they were out there defensively. O'Hara will set up shotgun set. He's got Kaba just in front of him to his right. Jet motion again. Handoff once again. Rolling is round the middle is Merkel, and he is slammed to the turf. Ryan Arsalov comes busting through and stops that play for a loss. That'll make it a second down and long. 
Possibly already once too much to the well there as Arsala was not fooled. That'll make it a second down, and they're going to call it 13. Ball sitting now outside the 45-yard line at the 46. Shotgun set once again. Trips to the near side, handoff up the middle, rolling to the far left side and stiff-arming his way across the 40-yard line to get some of that penalty yardage back, or rather that loss of down or loss on the carry back as Adrian Caba. That'll make it a third down, and they're going to call it about six as the ball will sit at the 39-yard line. Can Mawa come up with a big stop? Single wide out will come to the bottom of the screen. One on one coverage if O'Hara wants to go that way. Motion will bring a tight end into a stack formation on the right. High snap gets it down and going nowhere close to that first down marker is Adrian Caba. That'll make it a fourth down. And what's the decision for Joe Sabella? Looks like the offense is staying out there. They are deep enough in plus territory. And it's a fourth down and five after a gain of one on that third down carry by Kaba. Sky starting to turn a rosy pink just above the head of the Paramus offense. Offensive coordinator sending in the signals. O'Hara will relay it to his offensive line. Standing shotgun, joined by Kaba to his right. And did they get the timeout in? Yes, they did. And that'll be the first timeout of the first half for either side, and it comes with 58 seconds remaining in this first quarter. And they just could not get anything organized there on what is an important play. Fourth down and five. With the ball sitting at the 37-yard line, Paramus trying to answer the opening drive touchdown for the Thunderbirds. Lights are on and starting to get just a little chillier out here as the sun begins to set. Cormac O'Hara and the rest of his offensive line are all squared away. Two wide receivers standing on the bottom side of the screen, including Drew Renner, the junior, and Mason Merkel, who already has a big carry for a first down on this drive. Wide receiver to the top of the screen is Marco Giacci, the senior. And O'Hara will be joined in the backfield by Adrian Caba. Liam Jones is in there as a tight end as well. Now he'll come in motion once again, right over the center. High snap, O'Hara rolling pocket to the near side, facing some pressure at his feet. Now he's going to try to get it away, and he'll just eat it. And Mawa comes up with the fourth down stop to get the ball back, as that flood concept to the near side fooled absolutely no one in the secondary. It'll be a turnover on downs for Paramus out of the timeout, and they leave 51 seconds in the first quarter for Mawa to begin its second offensive drive. That'll bring David Kabobel back out. Looks like he'll take the first snap of this drive. Joseph DeMarco will set up as a slot receiver towards the bottom of the screen. Kabobel takes the snap. Hands it off Duffy, and he will pick up some positive yardage. Getting to about the 44-yard line. That'll make it a second down and six with 30 sec 39 seconds to go in the first quarter. Kaboba looking to the far side. We'll see if they try to get off a play on this second down and six or if they'll go the other direction on the other side of the break. They will at least line up. Two wide receivers to the bottom of the formation and twins tight ends to the left side of the line. Kabobel now adjusting the wide receivers and who's on the line and who is not. 
He will take the snap, hands it off to Duffy again. Pure wetting through one tackle, and he'll be brought down just shy of the first down marker to make it a third down and short when we return on the other side of this break of the Morris Sussex Sports Network. 7-0 Mawa leading Paramus after one on Friday Night Lights. ICS. They're the leaders in HVAC. They make the duct work at their own factory, so we even save some money. That's impressive. You recommend them? <laughs> it's ICS for HVAC. I see why. Ah. Hey, Lorraine, go get a big plastic bag. Take some air home with you. At Stuber Insurance Agency, we work diligently to make sure you get the right insurance for you, your family, and your employees. Within our carefully selected group of financially sound insurance companies, our goal is to find you the best coverage at the most competitive prices. Visit us online to request a quote or make an appointment at 115 Mill Street in Hackettstown. You saw on the split screen, Joseph DeMarco take the direct snap and run off the left side, and he will pick up the first down on third down and short as we welcome you back to George Hodgen Stadium at Paramus High School. The visiting Mawa Thunderbirds with the ball for the second time on offense, leading it 7 to nothing. My name is Reed Keller. Happy to have you with us on a gorgeous evening in Paramus just off Route 4 as the Thunderbirds go back to work. Looking for another jump on the far side, and they might have gotten it a little bit delayed as DeMarco was ready to take another direct snap. And it is an offsides on the Spartans. So they will pick up five yards by penalty once again to make this a first down and five with 11.37 to go. Thunderbirds moving left to right for the first time tonight. Get the ball inside the 40-yard line. DeMarco will stay out there to take another direct snap. Two tight ends either side of the line. It's high. He bobbles it, finally corrals it, and then just has to run forward and pick up what he can. That'll make it a second down and maybe four if they're generous. As the snaps have been high and indirect on both sides here this evening. They'll bring Kabobel, the normal quarterback, back in, senior. Standing in the shotgun, two wide receivers to either side. Calls for the hard count, gets nothing, looks to his coaching staff. Now takes the snap, drops straight back, protected well. Pressure coming late as he fires it into the flat. It's caught for the first down, moving up to the 30. Now breaking inside 20 and brought down inside the red zone with a late flag is Preston Duffy. Another big catch and carry for him. And what's the call going to be as that came down late? Looks like it will be against Paramus once again. They threw up a number four at the end of that. Although Paramus does not have a number four on defense, so it is a, or any number four is on defense, so that'll be against Mawa, as that's a block in the back that they call against Joseph DeMarco. So that's the second time that Duffy or DeMarco have had the ball out on the edge and gotten an illegal block to aid in their progress down the field happened on DeMarco taking the ball on a bubble screen. He got a hold in front of him. So that'll make it a first down and 10 from the 25 with 10.20 to go in the half. Kabobel puts it in the belly of Duffy and he is immediately slammed to the turf. A combination of Spartans getting there, including Daniel Eliash, his second tackle behind the line. And that'll make it second down and 11 to go. 
10 minutes remaining in the half. Gabobo will stand in a pistol formation for the first time tonight. Take the snap, and again, Duffy's nowhere to go. Racing through there, Christopher Akert, the senior. And another big, big, big third down coming up for the Spartans to try to get this Thunderbirds offense off the field. In fact, they give them a loss of another yard. It's third and 15. Bobel, shotgun snap, rolling pocket to the far side, fires the flood concept, another diving catch is made. That time it was Alexander De Dios getting underneath it for the first time. His first catch in the ball game makes it a fourth down and short with nine minutes remaining in the half. This is obviously go for a territory for the Thunderbirds, maybe a bit too far to try to kick it through the uprights. They're gonna call it a fourth down and a short three. As a jumbo set will come out for the Thunderbirds, Duffy will align himself in front of Kabobel, two wide receivers to the top of the screen. Snap to Kabobel, handoff Duffy, trying to find space on the left side. He gets towards the line, but is ultimately stuffed. A big fourth down stop by the Spartans, and that will give them the ball back for the second time with 8.14 to go. Couldn't really see who got over there to make the stick, but Duffy eschewed a little alleyway in the middle of the line, and he ended up getting popped two yards shy of the sticks. So it'll be a first down and 10 for the Spartans the ball sitting at the 19 yard line. Both teams coming up with fourth down stops defensively. Now what can Cormac O'Hara do offensively? Joined in the backfield by Adrian Cabo. Gets a jet motion, takes a high snap, puts it down into the belly of Mason Merkel. He's got space, turning up to the 25 and brought down at the 30. Another jet sweep carry for Mason Merkel, and that'll move the chains for a first down for Paramus. Gets the ball out to the 32-yard line on the Merkel carry for 13. O'Hara directing the signs. He's going to stand up in a pistol set. Cabo's going to take a couple of steps back, set up behind him. High snap again, gets it down, and it's kept, and rolling over a man. Oh, my goodness, Cormac O'Hara just laid the wood on Benjamin Kirshner. It's a small gain, but quarterback power run indeed off that option play. The junior getting the better of the senior there, as that'll make it a second down and eight with 7.35 to go. O'Hara setting up a shotgun set, takes the snap, fakes the but can't get away from the second wave. And he's brought down at the 31 yard line. We apologize for some of the technical difficulties on the broadcast. You haven't missed much. Paramus just booted the ball away on a fourth down and long, a gorgeous punt that sailed down to the Mawa 34 yard line. And then it was a loss of two on the carry right there on the first offensive play for David Kabobel, the senior quarterback, and the Mawa Thunderbirds under six minutes to go from Paramus High School. Kabobel out of the shotgun set. 
takes the snap, a little bit high, gets it down. Now he pulls it out late and he throws it, and it's incomplete as there's some pushing and shoving going on behind the play. Christopher Aker was involved a little bit too long with his man, and some of the other senior leadership comes over to say that's not what we need at this point. It's a third down and 12 with 5.43 to go. Paramus is trying to force the first three and out for either side. Two by two formation to either side, and now a timeout will come from the near sideline be the second timeout for Paramus. And that'll leave them with one as they try to come up with this third down and 12 stop. We're here in the second quarter. Want to give a quick shout out to the sponsors you see rotating through the top of your screen in the upper right, Biagio's and the Terrace, conveniently located in the heart of Paramus for lunch, dinner, and late night snacking. They do family dinners, great drinks, and private events for up to 600 guests. Modern Orthopedics of New Jersey, they are a proud sponsor of the Paramus football team. You can visit their website at modernorthonj.com or call them at 973-898-5999. Woodstone Pizza, family owned and operated since 2009, specializing in Italian American cuisine. You visit them at woodstonepizzabarandgrill.com. Joseph Mancuso, certified public accountant for your business tax, personal tax, and overall financial needs. Murray Contracting, no matter the job, large or small, they guarantee your satisfaction. Michael and Sons Auto Sales, serving the entire New Jersey area located in Tom's River. And for all your swimming pool needs as you close it up for the season, you can call Bear at Rochelle Pools at 201-384-7999. And also visit Stone Plus Design located in East Rutherford on Route 17. Kabobel out of the shotgun set on third down and 12, trying to come up with another long conversion for this Thunderbirds team. He'll drop straight back. Now he steps up in the pocket, and he takes on contact that is brought down. A combination sack will go to a senior in Christopher Akert. And I believe the other one was a senior, Daniel Eliash, who was in there as well. That'll make it a fourth down and long with 5.23 to go. No timeout from Paramus. They only have the one. And Mawa will punt for the first time tonight. They're going to send Adrian Kaba back deep for Paramus, retreating to his 40-yard line, still backing up, and he'll find a home somewhere around the 35-yard line. He needs some direction from his coaching staff as the punting formation will set up for Mawa. Australian-style boot sent inside the 35-yard line and it will be down inside the 30 for the T-Birds. And that'll set it up with 4.43 to go for Mawa. And they have two timeouts to work with on their second possession of the quarter. Both teams have punted now once in the ballgame. So Paramus set to head out, defending their home turf on senior night, trying to come up with a big, big stop. And get the ball back one more time for their offense to get something positive moving. Or rather, to tie the ball game up as they have the ball against this staunch Thunderbirds defense. It'll be a shotgun set for the blue-clad Spartans. Snap and a handoff off the near side, picking his way across the 30 is Kaba. He's up to the 35, and he will spin to the 40-yard line. Let's see if they say he stepped out before that. He did just that. It'll be brought down at the 38-yard line, and the clock will begin to move after the first down chains are set. 4.35 to go in this first half. Cormac O'Hara and his host of offensive skill players are looking to the near sideline. Marco Giacci is standing as the widest receiver to the bottom of the screen. They've already tried one deep pass to him. Jet motion, handoff, rolling off the right side and going pretty much nowhere is Mason Merkel. That's the third sweep that Mason Merkel has attempted. One of them has been successful so far. 
It'll be a second down and long now for the Spartans with 4.15 to go in the half. Drew Renner, the wide receiver, runs off and put on some other speedier bodies. Giacci is the wide receiver to the bottom of the screen. Cormac O'Hara yelling to the far side, needs some more instruction. Trying to get the playoff. They only have one timeout left, and there it goes. Joseph Bella is incensed as he is yelling to his troops as they come off the field. That's the last timeout Paramus has with 3.45 to go. So this will be a pretty impressive two-minute drill that they'll have to run if they're going to get on the board at all. 7-0 Mawa on a touchdown from Preston Duffy. Paramus is trying to drive to tie this ball game up at half or at least make this a one less than a one possession ball game. Paramus huddling on the near side. Mawa set to go defensively. Junior quarterback Cormac O'Hara heads out onto the field. We haven't seen him really get involved in the running game too much. Came in with 46 carries on his own this year. He does have one in which he absolutely laid the wood on Benjamin Kirshner, but it was only for a small gain on an unsuccessful drive for the Spartans. Motion across the line as it's another high snap, one-handed by O'Hara. He's going up the wheel route and it's dropped. He put it right in the hands of Adrian Caba. A little underthrown, but still got it there. And that'll make it a third down and long for the Spartans now with 3.39 to go. They do have one successful punt in the ball game. As the Paramus mascot trying to get the student section fired up. Third down and 11, ball still sitting at the 39-yard line. Wouldn't be the worst place to punt from for the Spartans, but obviously want to try to convert this third down and 11. O'Hara, another high snap. It's over his head. It's bounced at the 25-yard line, picked up by Kaba. He jumps over a man, gets to the 30, and then is swallowed up. Ending that chicanery is Alexander De Dios. And that'll make it a fourth down and forever. This might be a fourth down and 20 as the ball is placed at the 30. And the original line of scrimmage was just about the 40-yard line. And so that will bring out the punt unit. Brandon Durenberger has one good boot to his credit tonight. That was just a rough snap coming from Isaac Moon. So Mawa sends the return game out onto the field. Solo return man standing at the 32-yard line as Durenberger gets this one high in the air. That is not with a lot of hang time. It will bounce on the Mawa side of the field, but will die at the 48-yard line or so. And with 2.42 to go, Mawa has two timeouts and a 7-0 lead. Trying to put together a two-minute drill and double up their lead, if that, before heading into the break. Neither side has had a lot of offensive success. It's sort of been like two heavyweights trying to circle the ring a couple of times before really landing the body blows. Let's see what the second half brings us. Or what Mawa has cooked up here. Two wide receivers to the top of the screen. Kabobel will take the snap for the first time on this drive, and there's a false start on that left side of the Mawa line. And that'll back them up. So that'll make it a first down at 15 with 2.42 to go. Ball will move back to the 42. Seen a couple of false starts in this ball game. 
as Kabobo will relay the signals he's received from the far side. It'll be a similar formation. Kabobo joined by Duffy in the backfield. Two wide receivers to the top of the screen. Single coverage all around. Good snap. Kabobo dropping straight back. Pressure up the middle, trying to roll away from it. He'll just air it to the sideline. That was going for Duffy on a little flat out. And Eliash was the one who broke through and put on some pressure right up the middle of that line. Second down and 15 with 2.36 remaining. Paramus defense playing back towards the sticks. Two safeties in the ball game for them. Including Christopher Aker, who's playing directly in center field. Kabobo will set up. The shotgun set trips to the top of the screen. Takes the snap, gets it down, and then fires it up the seam route. And I don't think his wide receiver knew that he had kept the ball. His fake to Duffy was just that good. As that would have almost picked up the first down and maybe then some. It's an incomplete pass out of the hands of Kabobo. Elijah Dixon, the sophomore, is actually the back in there for this drive. As Kabobo is now looking for signs from his coaching staff. Three wide receivers in the ball game at the top of the screen, and now they'll send just Ryan Arsala to the top. Shifting backs in the backfield. Kabobo will be flanked by Elijah Dixon and Joseph DeMarco, who will now remain as the only back in the backfield. It'll be a handoff to DeMarco. He's trying to find space around the left side. He's got it up across the 50, and he lowers the shoulder as he gets to the 45-yard line of Paramus. Knocked Christopher Akert for a ride there, and that will set it down as a... Or no, it won't. I think there was another penalty on the Thunderbirds. They're going to ask whether they want to make this a third down and longer or a fourth down. If it's fourth down, it's in plus territory, and Mawa would definitely go for it with 2.21 to go. If it's a third down and long, you might be able to get a stop and... It looks like they've decided to make this a third and longer. Let's see what the call may be. It'll be a hold on the Thunderbirds, their second hold on the night. So that'll make it a third down and 17 from the 40-yard line. Now, Mawa has already converted a third down and 17. They were going in the other direction. They did that in the first quarter. 2-10 remaining. Twins to the bottom of the screen. It'll be a handoff around the near side edge. Another flag comes in. And after that run got up to the 45-yard line, it may be coming back even further. Back-to-back -back holds on the Thunderbirds. And with two minutes flat remaining, this will be a third down and very long. Mawa is going in the opposite direction of where they need to be headed in this two minute drill. Third down and 27. Except the Spartans are declining the holding penalty. So now they're gonna make it a fourth down and Fourth and well, they're still moving the they're still moving the ball. So it's going to be fourth down and twelve after the carry. They're going to let the play stand, and it'll be another punt. As standing back at the twenty-five yard line is the return man for Paramus. It is a good punt, sidewinding its way towards the twenty. It'll bounce and roll inside the 15 
a wise decision to stay away from it was made by Adrian Caba. And so now with a minute 31 to go in the first half, Paramus will have an opportunity to try to drive for points, although they do not have any timeouts remaining. Paramus has not had a ton of offensive success in this ballgame. Adrian Caba has had a couple of big runs for them, but with a limited passing attack and... They're going to say 90 yards to drive as they set the ball at the 10. Wouldn't be surprised if this turns into a see what you can get from the ground game and if not go to halftime down seven. O'Hara takes the snap. That time it's a good one. Gets it down into the hands of his running back and moving off the far side is Adrian Caba. He'll get out to the 16-yard line. And no, it won't. There's a hold on Paramus. It is a cooler night, but the athletes out on the field running around have no need to clutch for warmth. There have been three straight holding penalties that have derailed drives. So with a minute 23 to go, the ball will remain in the shadow of the Paramus goalpost. First down and 15 from just outside the five yard line. O'Hara is going to take this snap with his back heel and the shotgun inside his own end zone. Good snap this time, rolling pocket to the near side. He flips the hips, tries the go route. It is more towards the sideline than to his intended target, Mason Merkel. And so that'll leave it 57 seconds to go in the half and a second down and 15. Good spiral sent in the direction of Merkel. But far to the sideline and not his upfield shoulder. They run Drew Renner off the field. And we'll send Merkel to the top of the screen and have Marco Giacci in solo coverage just outside the hashes. A missed mesh point slightly as Merkel is slung down by his shoulder. That's going to be a horse collar tackle and an ill-advised decision there by the Mawa defender. So that will help Paramus out by giving them some penalty yardage back. 51 seconds to go. They still haven't gotten the ball outside the 20. Although they will now as the ball will rest at the 21. Now will make it a first down and 10 at the 21-yard line. O'Hara communicating to the near sideline. Giacci will stand as the widest receiver towards the bottom of the screen. He's trying to send Merkel to the top of the formation. And now they're still yelling. There's still confusion. They don't have a timeout to use, so O'Hara's going to have to take this snap regardless. Unless they want the delay of game penalty. Now Merkel coming in motion. And they're going to get the false start anyway. And that whole left side of the line is incensed. There is just discombobulation on the offense from Paramus. Merkel came in motion from the top of the screen. O'Hara is pounding his fists together in what the formation was. And as soon as Merkel moved, O'Hara clapped his hands again. The entire line shot off. And that actually, the funniest part about that, in all of that confusion, it looked like that was going to go for a pretty decent gain. It'll be first down at 15 once again. Clock continuing to run. See if they even get this one off. Merkel again coming in motion. The jet motion and in his face, O'Hara has pressure, so he'll sail it up the near sideline as the half expires. A slightly discombobulated two-minute drill for the Spartans, but they do take 
the halftime break, trailing only by seven. As we will step aside on the Morris Sussex Sports Network and join you back for second half action. Mawa leading Parama seven to nothing on the Spartan Senior Night from George Hodgins Stadium on the campus of Paramus High School. Calling all parents of young athletes. Did you know that safe medication disposal not only protects your young athletes, but also the environment they play in? Be a proactive guardian. Safeguard your home by disposing of medications properly through drop-off sites in New Jersey, located at most police departments and designated pharmacies. By doing so, you help prevent pollution of our precious environment, ensuring clean waterways and healthier surroundings for your young champions. Make a positive impact on their lives and the planet. Safely dispose of unused and unwanted medications today from right to left. The snap and the rolling pocket to the near side immediately under pressure. Now escaping to the outside is David Kabobel, and he will pick up the first down across the 30-yard line. The senior David Kabobel comes in with what looks to be the punt unit. Or just a different quarterback. It is just a different quarterback as Joseph DeMarco is going to stand in, take this direct snap, roll up the middle, and he will plow forward for the first down. Two wide receivers at the bottom of the formation, and two to the top. Gobobo straight drop back to pass, pressured up the middle. He pops it across the middle, and it's caught at the 50, spinning out of a tackle, and then matriculating to the 45-yard line is Ryan Arsala, the G formation. Bobel takes a little bit of a high snap, throws the bubble screen, it's caught, rolling up the far sideline, breaking out of a tackle, and headed down the sideline is DeMarco. He's going to roll into the end zone. Touchdown, Mawa. Kabobo will stand in a shotgun set. Looks over the defense, which is playing back, takes a high snap, he'll put it in the belly of Duffy, rolling off the near side, across the 45, turning the corner up to the 40, and he will be brought down there. That's still going to make it a fourth down and long. Down and seven at the 40-yard line. Willing to, if they don't convert. Now Welcome to 
Sheffield, your Paramount Spartan Park City Cheerleaders, under the direction of head coach Lisa Blanchard. Captain, 
Lord Dunlop Captain is Kim, the Wild is Steve, and your color guard captain is Jimmy Lee.
rolling pocket to the near side, immediately under pressure now, escaping to the outside is David Kabobel, and he will pick up the first down across the 30-yard line. The senior, David Kabobel, comes in with what looks to be the punt unit. Or just a different quarterback. It is just a different quarterback as Joseph DeMarco is gonna stand in, take this direct snap, roll up the middle, and he will plow forward for the first down. Senior Two wide receivers at the bottom of the formation and two to the top. Gobobo straight drop back to pass, pressured up the middle. He pops it across the middle and it's caught at the 50, spinning out of a tackle and then matriculating to the 45 yard line is Ryan Arsala, the G formation. Bobo takes a little bit of a high snap, throws the bubble screen, it's caught, rolling up the far sideline, breaking out of a tackle, and headed down the sideline is DeMarco. He's going to roll into the end zone. Touchdown, Mawa. Kabobo will stand in a shotgun set. Looks over the defense, which is playing back, takes a high snap, he'll put it in the belly of Duffy, rolling off the near side, across the 45, turning the corner up to the 40, and he will be brought down there. That's still going to make it a fourth down and long down and seven at the 40-yard line. 
willing to, if they don't convert, allow Paramus to start in their own territory. Kabobel rolling pocket to the far side. Pressured in his face. He tried to get it away. He can't. He's sacked. And there's a flag that comes out late. Is this going to be a horse collar attack? Beavers will come to the bottom of the screen. Two to the top as well in a reduced split formation. Kabobel takes the snap, drop straight back, protected well. Now he's going to roll out to the far side, sling it up the sideline, and it is too high and incomplete. Going for the corner post, and it did. Kabobel will work out of the shotgun. He's got two wide receivers to either side of the formation. Spartans playing coverage. Kabobel protected well, rolling to the near side, fires it into the middle, and it is a diving attempt as it hauled in. Now takes the snap, drops straight back, looking to the far side. He's going to take off and run to, the, to that way. Now he fires the little out route. It's caught, plowing towards the pylon, and in for the touchdown is Preston Duffy. Him to his right. Now tight end motion sets it up with two tight ends on the right. It'll be a jet sweep pitch play, trying to turn the corner, and coming up the near sideline is Mason Merkel, and he rumbles out to the 40-yard line. The Spartans pick up the penalty yardage and then some. O'Hara takes the high snap, gets it down to Kaba across the 40, 45, 50, breaking across the 45, and he's brought down by two Thunderbirds. A strong run for Adrian Kaba as his first official carry of the ball game picks up another first. Arrow will set up shotgun set. He's got Kaba just in front of him to his right. Jet motion again. Handoff once again, rolling is round the middle is Merkel, and he is slammed to the turf. Ryan Arsala comes busting through and stops that. Liam Jones is in there as a tight end as well. Now he'll come in motion once again, right over the center. High snap, O'Hara rolling pocket to the near side, facing some pressure at his feet. Now he's going to try to get it away, and he'll just eat it. And Mawa comes up with the fourth down stop to get his coaching staff. Now takes the snap, drops straight back, protected well. Pressure coming late as he fires it into the flat. It's caught for the first down. Moving up to the 30, now breaking inside 20 and brought down inside the red zone with a late flag is Preston Duffy. Another big catch. Kabobo will stand in a pistol formation for the first time tonight. Take the snap, and again, Duffy's nowhere to go. Racing through there, Christopher Akert, the senior. His first big tackle on senior night. That's going to make it a third. Kabobo, shotgun snap, rolling pocket to the far side. Fires the flood concept. Another diving catch is made. That time, it was Alexander DiDios getting underneath receivers to the top of the screen. Snap to Kabobel, handoff Duffy, trying to find space on the left side. He gets towards the line, but is ultimately stuffed. A big fourth down stop by the... Joined in the backfield by Adrian Cabo. Gets a jet motion, takes a high snap, puts it down into the belly of Mason Merkel. He's got space, turning up to the 25 and brought down at the 30. Another jet sweep carry for Mason Merkel, and that'll move the chains for a first 17. Kubobel out of the shotgun set on third down and 12, trying to come up with another long conversion for this Thunderbirds team. He'll drop straight back. Now he steps up in the pocket, and he takes on contact that is brought down. A combination sack will go to... It's another high snap, one-handed by O'Hara. He's going up the wheel route, and it's dropped. He put it right in the hands of Adrian Kaba. A little underthrown, but still got it there. And that'll make it... Obviously want to try to convert this third down and 11. O'Hara, another high snap. It's over his head. It's bounced at the 25-yard line, picked up by Kaba. He jumps over a man, gets to the 30, and then is swallowed up. Ending that chicanery is Alexander to top of the screen. Uh, back here at George W. Hodgins Stadium on the campus of Paramus High School, you saw some of the halftime highlights Although that last one, more of a low light uh, for the Paramus offense as they were trying to go through the two-minute drill and, and a ball go up over their head. And that is why they are unable to come up with a score in the first half. So the Thunderbirds will kick off to the Spartans as we start this second half.
Mawa scored their only touchdown in the first quarter on a rumble into the end zone by Preston Duffy, the junior. That's been the only points of the game and the only points that they've needed so far. Good combination of defense and controlling offense. The first drive for the Thunderbirds took up more than eight minutes of the first quarter clock, and that's pretty much the most the most successful offensive drive that we have seen in this game. Reed Keller along with our entire Morris Sussex crew as the ball is in the air. And it's a little pooch kick that's almost fumbled by Paramus, but they will roll over on it on the 35 yard line as Lakaio Green, the sophomore, was able to corral it. And the Spartans will maintain possession to begin the second half. I want to kick off the second half by thanking our sponsors, which you'll see rotate through the top of the screen. Biagio's and the Terrace, conveniently located in the heart of Paramus, Modern Orthopedics, Woodstone Pizza, Mancuso CPA, Murray Contracting, Michael and Sons Auto Sales, and of course, Rochelle Pools and Stone Plus Design and the Orange Lantern. Lights are on here as the snap is handled and the handoff to Kappa uh, and he gets across the 50 yard line. Adrian Kappa rolls for a first down on the off tackle handoff. And the Spartans have something going out of the gates. 11.50 to go in the third and they pick up their first first down on the first play. Adrian Kappa trying to play difference maker here in the second half. He had a couple of big plays in that first half. He also had a couple of runs called back due to penalty. Takes the first carry there, picks up a first down for the Spartans. A little bit of a high snap again. Same play, handoff Kaba picking his way off the left side and he will pick up a gain of about eight, maybe nine. That'll be a second down and short inside the Mawa 40 yard line. Cormac O'Hara, the junior quarterback, breaking the huddle, relaying the signs to his offensive line. Sets up with two wide receivers to the top of the screen and a tight end to line right. Pistol formation. Good snap to O'Hara, and he's going to keep it, and he rolls off the right side, picking up the first down. Second run on the day for Cormac O'Hara, and the sticks will move for the second time in three plays for the Spartans. Good script coming out of the break for Josebella's squad. They have a first down and 10 with the ball sitting at the 32 yard line. I also want to sh shout out the Spartans marching band. That Elvis performance in halftime is the only time I've ever seen a choreographer get involved in the production as that one is handed off around the near side edge. And that'll make Mason Merkel's first carry of the second half, a good sized gain. It'll be a second down and four after the gain of six. They ran that jet sweep to Merkel a couple of times in the first half to mix success. One time it came back because of a penalty. Third down and four as the Spartans are closing in on the red zone. Six yards shy of it as we begin the third quarter. Shotgun set, handoff Kaba rolling towards that 20 yard line. He's inside the 20, a lower his shoulder, pick up yet another first down. And the Spartans are just matriculating the ball downhill, doing all they can trying to tie this ball game up. 7 0 Mawa with 10 15 to go in the third. Or excuse me, 10 27 to go, clock stop, as Kaba was brought down out of bounds. 10 27 remaining. Wide receiver will go to the top of the screen. Two tight ends are in the ball game, both aligned to the left side. Jet sweep, and they're going to hand it off to Kaba on a deep back handoff, and he only gets about a yard. That time, the Thunderbirds were positioned perfectly. And now, with 10 15 to go in the third, it'll be a second down and nine. O'Hara lining his receivers. He'll send two to the top of the screen. In the slot over to the right is Mason Merkel. Be a handoff coming around the near side edge for Kaba, and he's ridden out of bounds. A 
quick reaction to the ball made there by the Mawa defense. That'll now make it a third down and nine. Unless they give him a small gain. Ball does sit at the 14 yard line, so they do give him a gain of three on that end around or off tackle carry. And the first third down of this possession coming up for the Spartans. They need six yards to pick up a fresh set. Shotgun, O'Hara, good snap. Kaba around the left end. He picks across his, the 10 yard line. Did he get to the first down though? That first down marker was at the nine and he did indeed. That sets up a first down and goal for Paramus. So Adrian Kaba really starting to strut his stuff. The senior making some big gains on this drive. That'll make it a first down and goal. Ball sitting at the six. Shotgun set, O'Hara takes it, hands it to Kaba, rolling up the middle, is he in? Yes he is, touchdown Paramus. The opening drive of the second half, and the Spartans go right down the field, and it's a one point ball game, extra point pending. Great drive out of the break. And we'll see the replay here, the middle of the offensive line, including the senior on senior day, Isaac Moon, just road grading a path for Kaba to cut right through the heart of the Thunderbirds defense. And now it's being, with it being a seven to six ball game, they'll send out Brandon Durenberger, the junior, who is 14 for 18 on extra points this year. Snap is good, hold is also good, and the kick is good, and we are tied at seven with 9.23 to go in the third quarter. This Spartan sideline, student section and fans combined now have something to cheer about. The ball game knotted up at seven. Great drive turned in there by O'Hara and Kaba. And whatever defensive prowess the Thunderbirds enjoyed in the first half evaporated in that halftime locker room. 9.23 remaining, get set to kick it off for the second time today, Will Paramus. Ball gets teed up at the 40 yard line to the right side, Durenberger. Clad in some pink socks and a pink undershirt for breast cancer awareness. We'll have a huddle right around the ball. Now they break it up, and he will get off his paces. We saw the Thunderbirds try to go with the onside kick to start the second half. Now what will the second kickoff bring? It is a deep line drive boot fielded in the middle of the field, and now it'll trickle into the end zone. And so that'll be a first down and 10 for the Thunderbirds with a ball game now tied at seven. Joseph DeMarco, David Kabobel, and Preston Duffy have been the main ball handlers for the Thunderbirds in the first half. Kabobel and Joseph DeMarco have alternated snaps at quarterback. This will be Kabobel, the senior, taking the first snap here of the second half. Two wide receivers to the top of the formation, actually trips to the top of the formation. It will still be a handoff to Duffy, and he goes absolutely nowhere. First man through there was Christopher Aker to make the stop. That'll be a second down and maybe nine if they're generous. They will not, they'll hold it to a second down and 10. The ball still sitting just in front of the 20 yard line. Kabobel out of the shotgun set, surveys his options, claps the hands together, hands it off Duffy again, stutter steps his feet, and is again nowhere to go. Tossed to the ground by a host of Spartans, including Hansel Asmar getting in there to clean it up, the senior. And now with 8.35 to go, it'll be a third down and 10. 
Big, big stop coming up here. It's not third and 99, but the scoreboard wants it to be. 8.20 to go. And Kabobo will stand in the shotgun, joined by Dixon. Elijah Dixon, the sophomore, will not get the ball here. There's a flag from the, fall, from the far side. Did they get a false start on the Thunderbirds? That would be their second of the night. And it is indeed. So that makes that third and nine back to a third and 14. Thunderbirds have converted a third down and long in this ball game. That was third and 17, but much more towards the middle of the field. 7.55 to go in the third. Kabobel out of the shotgun. Two wide receivers at the top of the screen. Single coverage all around. Dropping back, good pressure. He's going to step up. He's going to take off and run. No, he's going to skirt the line of scrimmage. Now cut back towards the middle of the field. He breaks his way across the 30, across the 35, and he's brought down for a first down. David Kabobel putting on a little bit of a move as well as he picks up a huge first down on third down and 14. And that'll move the chains with seven and a half remaining in the third quarter. You're going to see this move right here. He did his, did what he sought to do as a quarterback, step up and then skirt the line of scrimmage for as long as he could, and then he made a move to cut back inside Christopher Aker. That'll give him a first down and 10. Kabobo once again joined in the backfield by the sophomore. It's to be a small handoff and going nowhere is Dixon. And the Spartans run game Run game defense, rather, has been staunch in this second half. Second down and 11 to go. Kabobo will once again be the man taking the snap. In the slot will be DeMarco at the top of the screen. Kabobo claps the hands, rolling pocket to the far sideline, trying to flip the hips and fire the media part of the go-round. It is caught. Oh, what a catch. Joseph DeMarco went up and high-pointed the, the football as it came down. Just worked back through the body of his receiver, and that's the first big pass completion of the night for the Thunderbirds. They move into opponent territory with six and a half to go. It was good coverage, step for step, with the speedy DeMarco. That ball just fluttered right to the perfect spot. Although, they have the ball, it seems a bit ahead of where the catch was made, so DeMarco even got up and picked up a few extra yards. As this will be a handoff, Dixon working around the left edge, and he will pick up the first down again. Elijah Dixon plowing his way across the 30-yard line to move the sticks for Mawa trying to retake the lead. Just about halfway through the third quarter. Clock will begin to run as Kobobel sets up the troops. Tight end aligned to the left. Two wide receivers split wide. Dixon will go from Kabovo's left hip to his right. He's been the back for most of the plays on this series. Stacked wide receivers on the left side, and now DeMarco will come in motion and return to the slot left, and now a whistle comes from the Mawa sideline. That's their first timeout of the second half. So just a bit of confusion on what they wanted to do there. And with 5.36 remaining in the third, Mawa will burn one of the timeouts to come up with a plan for this first down play at the 23-yard line. Mawa had the 7-0 lead after one, held that at halftime. Paramus rolled right down the field to begin the second half and scored to tie it. And are now trying to defend 23 yards of fake grass to maintain this tied ball game. Brandon Dernberger has been good 
or was good on the extra point for Paramus. He's got a pretty strong leg and was showing that off in pregame and halftime warm-ups. On the other side for Mawa, they do not have a field goal attempt this year. Both Jack Newman and Daniel McClanahan are three for four on extra points. Kabobel out of a shotgun set. Gets a tight end motion from left to right across the line. Now will take the snap, fake the jet handoff, has pressure in his face, gets out of it again, and he'll dump it. Probably a smart play there from him as he just got rid of it as quickly as possible. And so now with five and a half to go in the third, it'll be a second down and ten. Bobel has led the charge offensively. Now standing in the shotgun, he'll move the sophomore Dixon to his right. Trips to the bottom of the screen. There's one wide receiver you can't see on the screen who's just off underneath the nutrition store banner. He said it's a handoff around the near side to Dixon and he picks up maybe a yard or two. Coming up after making the stop there with Cesar Ortiz, the junior. And that'll make it a third down for the Thunderbirds with 5-10 to go in the third. Kabobel shifting the personnel. And now it looks like Dixon is going to take a direct snap. No, here comes Kabobel. So he'll stand next to Dixon. On Dixon's right, Kabobel's left, two to either side, rolling pocket. Kabobel trying to flip the hips. He's firing into the corner, and it's incomplete. Throwing it up there, trying to have DeMarco go and make another play, and that'll make it a fourth down and 10 at the 23 yard line. Let's see what they decide to do on this fourth down and 10. 4.41 to go. Dixon's still out there, and DeMarco's going out there as well. Kabobo is slowly making his way back towards the shotgun set. Alexander Dios is in the backfield as well. Single wide receiver to the top of the screen is Ryan Arsala. Furthest outside of the bottom of the screen, Shamari Bowman. Kabobel rolling near side, pressured in his face, trying to get around one man. He's grabbed by the shoulder pads. He breaks out of it, and now he's back to the field, into the middle, being chased down. He curls back the other way. He's still at the 40-yard line. He's got nowhere to go. Now he fires it in the middle of the field. It's caught, and the first down is gained by Mawa. Oh, my goodness. Is that David Kabobel or Fran Tarkenton? I'm really not sure. First down and 10 for the Mawa Thunderbirds. An amazing completion to Dixon, who just got lost in coverage. Kabobel made a bevy of men miss, including Christopher Akert, who was hot on his tail. He spun him out of his shoes and threw from the 39 yard line all the way to the 16. For the first down, now the play out of the big pass is a handoff to the far left side, coming back to the middle of the field, and a big spill tackle ends that run. As Adrian Caba comes up from his defensive position and says this is enough. Huge tackle made by Caba right in the middle of the field for a loss of one. Mawa is just running backyard football plays left and right. Things settled down just a little bit here as Kabobel has the signs from the far sideline. And now he will step off actually as this will be the first direct snap we've seen to Joseph DeMarco in the second half. Takes it off the middle of the line and he is stuffed up. Not much to go on there as Daniel Eliash comes through and makes another tackle for loss. That'll make it a third down and long once again for the Thunderbirds with 2.50 to go. 
Time of possession heavily favoring the visitors in this ball game. Paramus trying to come up with a big stop and force a decision from Adam Zunch. Kabobo's back in there to lead the offense. Paramus' the sideline was yelling for a flag. They don't have one. Not sure what Coach Sabala was seeing as now pressure will come again. Rolling out, firing into the pylon, but just under tossing it was Kabobo. And he is slow to get up. David Kabobo is not up off the turf yet. A right-handed quarterback moving to his left. He tried to throw it towards the pylon and he just shorted it. He is now standing. And looks to be okay. But they are gonna send on a field goal unit, it looks like, especially after Kabobo came up a little bit gimpy. So this will be the first field goal attempt of the ball game for the Thunderbirds. Joseph DeMarco will hold, and Jack Newman, the sophomore, will step back to kick it. Fourth down and 10, 2.15 to go, ball spotted at the 11-yard line. Snap is high, it's down, the kick is towards the crossbar, and it is good! Jack Newman sailing it through for the Thunderbirds. And so with 2.11 to go, it is a 10-7 lead. Mawa gets itself back in front. That kick did not have a lot of altitude with it, but it crossed the crossbar all the same. And so now Mawa has the lead back. It will send their defense back to the field against Paramus, who had found the answer offensively. Adrian Caba had a huge drive to open the half. See what they can answer with here, trailing in the ball game once again. While we're here in the third quarter, want to thank our sponsors, Biagio and the Terrace, located in the heart of Paramus, owned by the same family. They have great family dinners, drinks, and private events for up to 600 at the Terrace. Modern Orthopedics, proud sponsor of Paramus football. Woodstone Pizza, Mancuso CPA, Murray Contracting, Michael and Sons Auto Sales, the swimming pool experts at Rochelle Pools, and Stone Plus Design in East Rutherford, located on Route 17, as well as the Orange Lantern. Kick is away, a low liner will bounce at the 20, picked up by Kaba, getting across the 20, up to the 25, bounces off his own man, finds some room with the 30, flag is down as he's across the 40. And let's see if this one will stand as the big return that Adrian Kaba turned it into. The flag is down at the 26 yard line, and it will not, it's a hold on Paramus. So Adrian Kaba got the crowd excited for a second, but a holding penalty will bring it back and so they'll start this offensive possession with 2.04 to go. Two oh four to go. Paramus's offense about to head back out. Ball is spotted at the seventeen yard line or so. Paramus in the all navy uniforms with the Penn State esque helmets, all white with the navy stripe across the top, working against the white clad Thunderbirds. Baby blue numbers outlined in black and chrome helmets. High snap, O'Hara handles it, slant route is thrown and caught. What a snag, getting the hands underneath it by Drew Renner, the junior. He's brought down after picking up a first down by pass. And that's the first big completion for Paramus on the night. They are rolling down the field once again. First down and 10. 
O'Hara out of the shotgun, takes the snap, gets it down, hands it off to the back, Kaba, and he is blitzed as he picks up about five. But a hard run by Adrian Kaba. That'll make it a second down, a medium with a minute 15 to go in the third. Second down and four to be exact on the gain of six. Just a minute to go in this third quarter now. O'Hara out of the shotgun. Kaba slightly in front of him off to his left. Jet motion coming from Merkel. He'll get it. Rolling around the left side. Now he tries to find the hallway up the middle, and he does for the first down across the 40-yard line. We don't have exact stats up here in the booth, but I believe Paramus might have more first downs in just this third quarter than they did in the entire first half combined. So they have 40 seconds remaining to try to pick up another one as the ball sits at the 41 yard line. Trips will come to the bottom of the formation. Giacci and Merkel are the two closest on the inside. Now Merkel from the slot, high snap, they get it down into his belly, trying to slide across the 40, he does. But he's brought down after a moderate gain. Solid tackle made there by Steven Lewis, and that will bring us to the fourth quarter. It's been a good one here at George Hodgins Stadium, a 10-7 ball game with 12 minutes remaining as Paramus looks for another off answer offensively. We'll be right back on the other side of this break on the Morris Sussex Sports Network. Your trusted partner for all your home needs. For over two decades, we've brought our clients' visions to life throughout northern New Jersey. Our team of professionals and commitment to excellence deliver outstanding results. From painting, bathroom and kitchen renovations, additions, remodeling, and custom faux work, we've got you covered. Our team tackles projects of all sizes and complexities. Step-by-step -step painting, building dreams, one project at a time. Go ahead, take a deep breath. Oh, nice, huh? That's some clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature. That is good. Who installed the system? ICS. They're the leaders in HVAC. They make the duct work at their own factory, so we even save some money. That's impressive. You recommend them? <laughs> it's ICS for HVAC. I see why. Ah. Hey, Lorraine, go get a big plastic bag. Take some air home with you. Back here at George Hodgins Stadium. Mawa with the 10-7 lead. Paramus driving. The handoff comes off the near side. Adrian Kaba gets to the 45-yard line to set up a third down for the Spartans. Paramus' senior night. They were trailing it 7-0 through the first half. Took the opening drive, went down the field, tied the game, and then Mawa answered immediately to make it 10-7. Out of a pistol formation, Cormac O'Hara takes another high snap, gets it down. Kaba bouncing off tackles to the 50, 45-40, 35-30. He breaks up another tackle, 25-20, 50-10-5. Touchdown, Adrian Kaba, and touchdown, Paramus. Unbelievable running in this second half for the senior as Kaba bounced off a couple of men and rolled into the end zone for Paramus' second touchdown in as many offensive drives. Made two men collide in the backfield, and then as he was chased down the near sideline, he broke away from his opposite number, the running back Preston Duffy, who plays linebacker on defense. And now Paramus will line up, trying to make this a four-point ball game with 11.20 to go in it. Thomas Hosey will hold. Snap is held and down, and the kick is good. 
And so with 11.20 to go, it's a 14-10 ball game. Paramus has their first lead on the night. And they're going to send their defense back out, looking for the biggest stop of the ball game and trying to recapture all of the momentum. We've seen some absolutely wild ball games throughout this football season on the Morris Sussex Sports Network, and this one has been no different. A crossover matchup between the two third place teams. Mawa out of the American Red trying to avoid a second straight loss after losing 17 to 14 to Ramsey last week. They sit at four and two coming into this one and two and two in their division. Paramus is at five and two and two and two in their division. They are on a four game winning streak after two losses in week two and three to the two teams ahead of them, Old Tapan and Pascac Valley. Ball is teed up at the 40 yard line. Brandon Durenberger approaches the ball and sends it deep over to the outside numbers. It's picked up and then dropped by Dixon. Now he has it again to the 10, the 15, up to the 20 yard line, maybe just a bit shy. And so that's where Mawa will take over with two timeouts left in the ball game. 11.07 to play. Rather 11.15 to go in the game. Scoreboard fixes itself. This is a huge drive for Mawa. They had an answer the last time Parama scored, but it was only a field goal, which was fine. It was a 7-7 ball game at that point, but a, seven, a field goal here doesn't get the job done. Bobel takes the snap, handoff, running off the left tackle, and picking up a moderate gain is, Alec, is Elijah Dixon. That'll set us under 11 minutes to go. So Dixon, the sophomore, getting more opportunity to carry the ball here on this big drive for the Thunderbirds. Two wide receivers are coming to the bottom of the screen, including Joe DeMarco. Gabobo claps the hands together, fakes the handoff, pop pass across the middle, caught by DeMarco, spun around just in front of the sticks, and he will have the first down out to the 30-yard line. So another big pass completion for the Thunderbirds after Kabobel scrambled around on that last drive that ended in the field goal. So now he has a first down and 10 and will set up with two wide receivers to the top portion of the screen and the tight end of the line right. Now Dixon will settle himself off Kabobel's left hip. Bubble screen out to Demet to DeMarco and he was almost blown up. Heard the footsteps coming and just could not corral the ball. Probably a good thing because that put it for a loss. It'll be a second down and 10. As the Thunderbirds try to work into the pass game portion of their playbook. We have some scoreboard updates for you. All, a lot of the games started before our, or after ours as Kabobo rolling pocket to the right side. Now steps up, hauls it down the field, wide open and making the catch inside the 30, spinning off a tackle, rolling towards the end zone and in for the touchdown is the junior or the senior Ryan Arsala. Or that wasn't Arsala, rather. That was Shamari Bowman who made the catch. A huge, huge play for Shamari Bowman. And I realize that we've lost the camera and all that excitement, so we'll just really turn this into a radio broadcast as now Mawa has a 16 to 14 lead with 9.24 to go. They will send on Newman to add another extra point. Snap down, kick on its way, and it is good. And so with 9.55 to go, 
Ace work by producer Nick Prill to get the camera back up, and now he'll set the scoreboard and everything for you. 17-14 the score after the extra point is added by Mawa. And now Paramus will have to answer once again. Everybody was standing for the lovely halftime show, and since this second half has gotten underway, they haven't needed more than the edge of their seat. We've got 9.55 to go, and Mawa's about to kick off once again. They were trying to warm up Kabobo's arm in that drive. They had a couple of pass plays, and then he just absolutely laced that one up the middle on a blown coverage. This kick is fielded by Kaba at the 20, gets across the 25, and the ball is on the ground, but it looks like Paramus might have dove back atop it. And they maintain possession as Johnny on the spot was Drew Renner. He comes out of it with the ball. And so with 9.50 to go, Paramus trailing by three once again. Mawa has had leads of 7-0, 10-7, and now 17-14. Paramus has all three timeouts to use. as they will break the huddle. And Cormac O'Hara, the junior quarterback, will have to lead another come from behind drive. Single wide receiver between the hashes and the numbers to the near side of the screen. O'Hara, jet motion, hands it off. Picking his way off the left, right side is Merkel. Picks up maybe four of the needed 10, and a late flag comes in. Shamari Bowman for the Thunderbirds was in the area. What's the conversation between the officiating crew? Thunderbirds are already backing up. It's a dead ball personal foul on Mawa. And that is a huge, huge penalty as that one will set Paramus up at the 49 yard line. First down by penalty with 9.32 to go. O'Hara dispatching a trio of wide receivers to the top of the screen. Renner, Giacci, and also Mason Merkel, but the handoff goes to Adrian Kaba, and he will pick up about three to make it second down and seven. They do get the ball into Mawa territory, trailing by three. Now they will set up with Renner as the near side receiver. Merkel will go to the slot to the top of the screen. Widest out there is Marco Giacci. Motion across the line from the tight end, Liam Jones. Snap a little bit high again, keeping it, rolling around the outside is O'Hara, and he will come very close to that first down marker. They will, in fact, move it. It'll be a first down, or will they? No, they're going to say that he came up just short of the sticks. Even though the near side official crossed the 40 yard line, there we go. I was going to say the near side official stepped across the 40 yard line. The chains on the far side of Mawa did not move though. Now they will set up with a first down and 10, ball placed at the 39 yard line. Shotgun set O'Hara. Motion from Merkel, hands it off. No, he's going to keep it up the middle. That mesh point was a little late. And so O'Hara rolls through the middle, and he will pick up about five to make it a second down and medium. Let's try to get you some of those scoreboard updates. Roxbury is up 16 to nothing. Bridgewater Raritan has a 9 to 6 lead. Northern Highlands 35 nothing over Clifton. Mountain Lakes 28 nothing over Booton. As this is a handoff rolling up the near side. Merkel, he breaks through. He's to the 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Mason Merkel. They've been trying to run. 
jet sweep to Merkel for a success all night, and it finally breaks to put Paramus back in front, 20 to 17. Although now the officials are huddling. Coach Sabella is shaking his hands in disgust, it looks like. Now what is the decision though? A sideline warning on Paramus? All right, well, can you blame them? I mean, look at this exciting replay as Merkel takes the jet sweep, has a cavalcade of blockers in front of him, and then he just outruns two linebackers to the end zone. And it'll be an extra point attempt coming from Brandon Durenberger. Snap is good, hold is down, kick is up, and it is good. And so with 7.16 to go, Paramus is back in front, 21 to 17. This was a seven nothing ball game at halftime. After three, it was 10 to seven Mawa. And Paramus is now in front, 21-17 with 7.16 to go. Offense has exploded out of the break as adjustments have been made by both sides. So now, Mawa will set up to return. They've had an answer each of the last two times. Ball be spent, will be set down by Durenberger. Mawa has two return men. Standing back at about the five yard line. Including Elijah Dixon, who has taken over most of the running back duties here in the second half. Don't know what might have happened to the starting running back, Preston Duffy, but we have not seen him. Kick is to the five yard line, fielded by Dixon, up to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, up to the 25, and he will be brought down just shy of the 30 at the 28 yard line. First down and 10 for the Thunderbirds, who had a long pass to get their last touchdown. What can David Kabobo come up with for an answer here? Ramis is going to play two safeties pretty far off the ball, including Drew Renner. Solo coverage across the formation. Smawa will have three wide receivers. Kabobo claps the hands, drops back to pass, fires it up the far sideline, and Drew Renner ran through him, and that's going to be a flag for pass interference. Renner was playing center field. He saw the ball sail up the far sideline and just got there way before his man. So that'll be a first down by penalty for the Thunderbirds, except. Did they not accept the penalty? No, now that, yeah, there we go. Why did we have to walk all the way back? Interesting. So that'll put the ball down at the 44 yard line. And that'll be a first down and 10 for Mawa. Kabobo will set up at a shotgun set. Dixon will be the running back to his left. Kabobo takes the snap. Hands off Dixon, off the right side, picks up about four. He'll be brought down across the 45, shy of midfield. 6.50 to go. Mawa playing from behind once again. They had leads of 7 nothing. 
10-7. And then trailed it 14-10. to They had a 17-14 lead for the blink of an eye, it seemed like. Kabobel out of the shotgun. Takes the snap. Fakes the handoff, Dixon. Slant route is caught and falling over the back of his man is Ryan Arsala, his first catch since the first half. And that'll be a first down and 10 into Paramus territory. Gavobo will set up with a shotgun. Running back to his left, two wide receivers to the top of the screen. or rather tight end motion across the line as Kabobo hands it off. Dixon trying to bounce off a man, and he's brought down a solid tackle there made by Christopher Aker. That'll make it a second down and long. They're gonna make it a second down and nine off the Aker tackle after a yard. Kabobo. He's taken a majority of the snaps here in the second half after both he and Joseph DeMarco switched off in wildcat formation, so to speak. And now Duffy is back into the ball game, I believe, for the first time in quite some time. He is, it's a rolling pocket to the outside. The flat route is caught. It'll be a minimal gain though. It'll make it a third down and medium. That'll be another catch for Joseph DeMarco. And we're under five minutes to go in the ball game. It'll be a third down and six. Widest out in the formation is Arsala. He's at the bottom of the screen. Kabobo trying to make magic happen again. He'll break right up the middle and he dives forward. Did he get the first down? He's very close if he did not, but he did. He moves the chains on another quarterback run. First down and 10 for the Thunderbirds with four and a half to go. Paramus has all three timeouts remaining here in the second half. Mawa is left with two after needing to burn one early in the third quarter coming way outside the numbers on the near side. Doesn't matter as this is a trap handoff going off the right side. Arsala was basically on the Paramus sideline. But Duffy picks up his first carry since the first half and picks up maybe three. It'll be a second down and seven. 3.50 to go in the ball game. Paramus trying to hold on to this 21-17 lead. Arsala once again the receiver in single coverage at the bottom of the screen. Kabobel takes the snap, drops back, pressured in his face. Now he's going to retreat to his 40s, running around. He's trying to fire it down the field. It's caught, and Duffy has another first down inside the red zone down to the 15-yard line. David Kabobel has been fantastic in extending plays left and right. And that's a big pass completion to make this a first down and 10 for the Thunderbirds. We'll see it again here as Kabobo kept his eyes downfield and the big shoulder square to his intended target. The flood concept to the one side didn't work so he escaped a bevy of men and just floated it perfectly to Duffy who took on contact and held on to the ball. A solid tackle attempt made by Mason Merkel but not after the pass completion. Now the ball is set down at the 15-yard line, and they're walking it forward even more after a personal, after a roughing the, roughing the passer. Well, so I guess they got a hand on Kabobel at some point. I'm not sure where that occurred. It'll make it a first down, and now goal to goal. Kabobel rolling pocket, has a blocker out in front of him, throws the flat route too high. He oversailed his man. That was going for Benjamin Kirshner, who was trying to get lost in transition. And that'll make it a second down and goal. 
Second goal coming up for the Thunderbirds. Just a bit too high on that toss from Kabobel. Can the Thunderbirds come up with an answer and put Paramus into a tough spot? 322 remaining in the ball game. Shotgun set for the Thunderbirds. Two wide receivers to the top of the screen. Gabobel takes the snap. Handoff Duffy rolling up the middle and he's gonna be brought down short of the goal line. But he moves the ball ever closer. It's now well inside that 10 yard line. They're gonna put it down at the six for a third down and goal. And here comes what could be the play of the night for Paramus and what's probably two down territory for Mawa. Trailing it 21-17, a field goal doesn't do them much good, especially with only two timeouts. Shotgun set, two wide receivers to the top of the screen. Single coverage for Arsala on the bottom. Instead, they're gonna hand it off Duffy and he is brought down outside the five yard line. It's a tackle to the six. And here is what could be the play of the game. 2.25 to go, 21-17, homestanding Paramus Spartans on their senior night, trying to keep their winning streak alive and put themselves in the catbird seat. This is the loudest this home side has been all night long as the Thunderbirds line up to go for it. Fourth down and goal from the five yard line. And now a timeout will come from Coach Sabala as he sees how Mawa was lining up. So that's their first timeout of the second half. It'll leave them with two. And we'll settle everything down for a second, take a deep breath, and line up for the fourth down and goal play. In the fourth quarter, we're gonna get our sponsors in, Biagio's in the Terrace. Great place to have your private event in the heart of Paramus. They can host up to 600 in their private rooms. They also do dinner and drinks. Modern Orthopedics, the proud sponsor of the Paramus football team. Woodstone Pizza, Mancuso CPAs, Murray Contracting LLC, Michael and Sons Auto Sales, Bear at Rochelle Pools, and in East Rutherford on Route 17, Stone Plus Design, and the Orange Lantern as well. All proud sponsors of football on the Morris Sussex Sports Network. And so here we go. Thunderbirds are ready. Spartans are ready. Fans are ready. Fans on the far sideline for Mawa are ready as well. Just over two minutes to go in the ballgame. 2.03 exact. Stands are shaking. So is the press box at George Hodgins Stadium. Shotgun set for Kabobel. Two wide receivers at the top of the screen. He's going to roll that way. Now he's looking back to the middle of the field. And underneath the goal post. And it's caught. It's caught. Touchdown, Mawa. Oh my goodness! A basketball style catch made by Benjamin Kirshner, and what a throw from David Kabobel. 157 to go, and the Thunderbirds, for the fourth time in this second half, are back in front. Kabobel rolled to his right, and then the tight end Kirshner became uncovered diving for it and making the catch right underneath the goalpost to give his team the lead once again. And now it'll be the hold for DeMarco and the extra point attempt for Jack Newman to make this a four point ball game once again. Snap is good, hold is good, kick is on its way and it is right down route four. And so with a minute 57 to go, the Spartans are up against it. Two timeouts remaining. And how far will they have to drive to retake the lead? Mawa will set to kick off. The crowd's enthusiasm tampered somewhat. 
Still plenty of time for this offense to move down the field, as they have done with conviction here in the second half. Adrian Kaba can break a return. He is back deep, standing at the far side 10-yard line. The ball is sent his way to the 20-yard line, 25-30. 35-40, good field position for the Spartans to begin this drive with a buck 53 to go. In the game of the night, Cedar Grove has a 15 to 14 lead over Caldwell. So that's turned into the Donnybrook we expected. Again, Cedar Grove was the last team to beat Caldwell before they went on their 34 game win streak. That came all the way back in 2021. Caldwell two-time defending champions. Right here, the five and two Paramus Spartans are trying to keep their win streak alive over the four and two Mawa Thunderbirds. Cormac O'Hara on a senior night as a junior, trying to lead a comeback once again. Shotgun set, jet motion, takes the snap, handoff Mason Merkel. And he will pick up about two, maybe three. Make this a second down with a minute 44 to go. Not a ton of urgency just yet from the Spartans. They'll set up with a trips formation to the top of the screen. Kaba is to the right. Jet motion again for Merkel. Play action. He's going to roll back, and he's going to fire to the 35-yard line. It's picked off, and that's going to do it. Cormac O'Hara was pressured right off the snap. He tried to get it to Kaba on a prayer, and it was picked off at the 35-yard line. A big play once again from, I believe, Preston Duffy. will check the replay. You're going to see the pressure came off the near side from Ryan Arsala. He just came completely unblocked. O'Hara got away from it, threw it, and it was into a host of Thunderbirds, and it was indeed Duffy who comes up with it. And that will set the Thunderbirds up in victory formation. They can do that because Paramus only has the two timeouts left. They'll spend the one there. And that'll stop the clock with a minute 15 to go. And a second and 10, up here talking it over. Not much you can do in the victory formation because coming into this drive with the two timeouts, all Mawa has to do is snap it on third down. There would be no, basically no time left. Do it again, and another timeout will come. And so that'll stop it with a minute 13. Now Paramus can no longer stop the clock. This is apropos of nothing, but this is the first high school game I think I've done in which coaching staffs have used all their timeouts in both halves. Paramus went into the halftime break with none. Now they have none remaining. And a minute 13 staring them in the face. Mawa will have to snap it on fourth down. It's just a question of what they decide to do there. They're probably, they're not gonna give the Spartans the ball back and give them a prayer, I wouldn't think. So this snap and knee will start the clock. They'll have to do it again. And it might have to be a little bit of a runaround from Kabobel as he does take the knee and the clock will start. While this is winding down, we're going to hand out some thank yous as well. George Muha, the executive producer of all Morris Sussex broadcasts. Caitlin Langan, the associate producer for them as well. Nick Prill, our cool-headed producer here in the broadcast booth, fixed a camera issue on a big touchdown, wasn't out for long. And our cameraman, Justin Haight, who's been up there catching this wild second half in all its glory for you. 
We get to 40 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Kabobel is looking to the far sideline. It is fourth down. They're trying to come up with what they want to do. They're probably going to wind it down as much as they can and take the, one of the two timeouts they have left, which they do. That leaves 25 seconds. So regardless of what happens, Paramus is going to get the ball back with a chance. Not a great chance, but a chance. And let's see what Mawa decides to do on fourth down. It's fourth down, and because of the kneel downs, we're going to call it 14. And that leaves 27 seconds. So if you go with a punt, which for the Thunderbirds has worked out once today, your goal is to put Paramus on their side of the field. And they would need either the Hail Mary or the hook and ladder, or the holy roller, or you know, go to any NFL Films footage you can of trick plays. That's probably what the Spartans are gonna have to draw up. We also wanna remind you to stay tuned on social media after the game for our player of the game interview. And if Mawa can hold this lead, I have a pretty good sense that it might be David Kabobel. Punt will come, it is a good, good punt. That's gonna fall into the arms of Kaba at the 39 yard line. And so here you go, 23 seconds remaining in the ball game. Does Paramus have a miracle? First and 10 for the Spartans at the 39 yard line. Cormac O'Hara threw the interception that gave Mawa the opportunity to run the clock down. but they didn't run all of it down, they couldn't. So 23 seconds to go, and we're about to find out just how far this junior quarterback for Paramus can sling this pigskin. Kaba will stand in the backfield as a combination safety valve personal protector for him. Two wide receivers to either side of the formation. Jet motion for Mason Merkel, play action to him, pump fake, throw to the outside, high, caught! and brought down inbounds. So now they have to run up and get it set as the stick set is so they can spike it. O'Hara gets over the ball and he will slam it into the turf, standing at the 50 yard line, 15 seconds to go. Big catch made by Marco Giacci and they're into opponent territory. Second down and 10, ball sitting at the Mawa 45 yard line. No timeouts for the Spartans. Any play at this point would pretty much have to go out of bounds on the catch, unless you could just as quickly run up and run the same play because the clock does stop for first downs being reset. Marco Giacci is headed back out there after that big catch for the diminutive senior receiver. He'll go to the top of the screen. Empty backfield for the first time tonight. This is all gonna be on the offensive line for Paramus. Shotgun set, good snap. O'Hara, pump fakes once, pump fakes again, throws it up the middle of the field and then it's picked off again. He went for Giacci up the middle and Joseph DeMarco, the senior do-it-all man for the Thunderbirds, makes the interception. And so now one more victory formation and that will do it for Mawa as they survive 24-21. Last week, they were beaten at the gun on a 18 yard field goal from Ramsey. This week, they get all they could handle from Paramus in the second half after taking a seven nothing lead into the break. And now Kabobo will knee the ball down one more time and that will set them up for a regular season finale against Dumont, their divisional opponent next week. As the snap, the knee, and that does it. The Mawa Thunderbirds play in a classic and pick up a big, big victory. They move to five and two on the year. This is the first time that they have beaten Paramus over the last five contests. 
they pull off a big victory for them and keeping their postseason hopes alive as Paramus comes up just short on senior night. Once again, the thank yous to George Muha, Caitlin Lang, and Nick Prill, and Justin Haight. My name is Reed Keller. We'll see you next time on the Morris Sussex Sports Network as we say goodnight. Gets it down and then fires it up the seam route. And I don't think his wide receiver knew that he had kept the ball. His fake to Duffy was just that good. As that would have almost picked up the first down and maybe then some. It's an incomplete pass out of the hand. And Stone plus design and the orange lantern. Lights are on here as the snap is handled and the handoff to Kappa uh, and he gets across the 50 yard line. Adrian Kappa rolls for a first down on the off tap. Martins are closing in on the red zone. Six yards shy of it as we begin the third quarter. Shotgun set, handoff Kaba rolling towards that 20 yard line. He's inside the 20, he'll lower his shoulder, pick up yet another first down. And the Spartans are just, that'll make it a first down and goal. Ball sitting at the six. Shotgun set, O'Hara takes it, hands it to Kaba, rolling up the middle is the end. Yes, he is. Touchdown, Paramus. The opening drive of the second half. And the and he's grabbed by the shoulder pads. He breaks out of it, and now he's back to the field. Into the middle, being chased down. He curls back the other way. He's still at the 40-yard line. He's got nowhere to go. Now he fires it in the middle of the field. It's caught, and the first down is gained by Mawa. Oh, my goodness. Is that David Kabobel or Fran Tarkin? His sophomore will step back to kick it. Fourth down and 10, 2.15 to go. Ball spotted at the 11 yard line. Snap is high, it's down. The kick is towards the crossbar and it is good. Heading across the 20, up to the 25, bounces off his own man, finds some room with the 30, flag is down as he's across the 40. And let's see if this one will stand as the big return that Adrian Kaba turned it into. The flag is down at the helmets, all white with the navy stripe across the top, working against the white clad Thunderbirds. Baby blue numbers outlined in black and chrome helmets. High snap, O'Hara handles it, slant route is thrown and caught. What a snag, getting the hands underneath it by Drew Renner, the junior. Ain't nothing over Booten. As this is a handoff rolling up the near side. Merkel, he breaks through. He's to the 20-10-5, touchdown Mason Merkel. They've been trying to run. Kabobo claps the hands, drops back to pass, fires it up the far sideline, and Drew Renner ran through him, and that's gonna be a flag for pass interference. Renner was playing set 14 lead for the blink of an eye, it seemed like. Kabobo out of the shotgun. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, Dixon, slant route is caught and falling over the back of his man is Ryan Arsala, his first catch since the first half. Coverage at the bottom of the screen. The Bobel takes the snap, drops back, pressured in his face, now he's gonna retreat to his 40s, running around, he's trying to fire it down the field, it's caught, and Duffy has another first down inside the red zone, down to the 15 yard line. David Kabobel formation to the top of the screen. Kaba is to the right, jet motion again for Merkel. Play action, he's gonna roll back, and he's gonna fire to the 35 yard line, it's picked off, and that's gonna do it. Empty backfield for the first time tonight. This is all going to be on the offensive line for Paramus. Shotgun set, good snap. O'Hara, pump fakes once, pump fakes again, throws it up the middle of the field, and it's picked off again. Yeah.